Yes, I see. <sighs> Questions in the chat. Don't worry, guys. Still streaming. Switching to Doom Eternal. Uh, man, Half-Life Alex is really, really good, though. Um, I'm trying not to just blow through it, also. I, uh, yeah. I sat down and I was like, ooh. Oh. Oh, my. Oh, that, that feels good. So, yeah. I think my, uh, my gamer body appreciated uh, traditional gaming too much. Missed Alex? Yeah, sorry. Sorry, to do boy. Um, but don't worry. I'll be back at it soon. Um, man, I'm enjoying that game. So, yeah. I'm gonna continue the horror, or sorry, 100% nightmare run. Thank you for changing games while you stream for long. Helps me, definitely, definitely helps me jumping in. Thank you for changing games while you stream for long. Yeah? So you don't feel like you're missing anything? You can, you can arrive when a, when a game starts. Oh, two tyrants and a baron of hell and a doom hunter. Cool. Yeah, it's, uh, I feel like to some degree the Slayer Gates are just like a preview of the combat you're gonna, gonna run into eventually. Yep, new game. I felt like clicking on some things. I felt like, uh, running around with Wazd instead of my feet. location remains unknown. The demonic consumption of Earth will not be stopped. I remember how to play, jeez. Last priest and his guardian are destroyed. Oh, nice job, Dylan. Yeah, Blasphemous is a really fun game. To locate the final hell priest. <sighs> also, help us with our search. Since I just wrapped up a portal to the Ark's command station. Love the Doomicorn skin. Yeah, it's really, really good. There's a uh, there's apparently other like Doomicorn unlocks that you get. Oh, I'll put on my uh, I'll put on a different. Oh, it's the Maker skin for the the super shotgun, I think. Um. And a path life for today? Uh, yeah, for now, I think. Probably this and then and then Animal Crossing. Uh, depending. Oh, the other thing I should mention is, since I'm kind of celebrating wrapping up a lot of projects that hit last week, having, having, a, having a little drink. A little drink. Don't forget about the Ripatorium to progress mastery challenges. Ooh. If you die in the Ripatorium, do you die for real? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to track, like, what counts as as deaths so that I know what to what I can like what I can exploit and what I can't um, when I do extra life and, and ultra nightmare uh, yeah trying to figure that out a game I'm sometimes okay at but love yeah Tyquer it's uh, this game humbles you humbles you fast all right just kind of getting my sea legs back I'm probably gonna be dying a lot right out the gate but does it get nauseous playing Half Life Alex for a long period of time I don't I don't really feel that no. Um, for me more, it's like if I stand for six hours, then my feet get a little achy. Um, which is, I don't, I feel like that's kind of, there are people who can stand all day, I think, and not feel anything, but. This is the Resistance Network. In an unbelievable turn of events, the Supergore Nest has been destroyed. Reports from ARC personnel in the field say that they have seen a significant decrease in demonic activity across the globe. Many believe this is proof that the Doomslayer himself has in fact joined the Resistance effort and has successfully eliminated key figures within the ranks of the challenged. Operatives working inside the UAC cultist organization claim that the leader of that division, Priest Dayag Ranok, oh, it's was Dayag. removed from his office recently. Not a fan of ARC broadcasts? I'm kind of not either. The leadership within the mortally challenge continue to fall. We are seeing a decreased threat from the demons on all fronts. Don't really know what they add. Yeah. Resistance, a key advantage in the war for Earth. The UAC continues to deny any knowledge of his existence. As surviving members of the Ark Network, it is the belief of this station that these reports are in fact true. We believe the Slayer has joined us in the battle against the demons. To anyone still listening to this broadcast, know that there is hope, and he is out there. Yeah, Green Warbler, I was not a huge fan of the Ark broadcasts. I mean, the lore delivery vehicles in this game are, are largely pretty, pretty typical. It is really strange that, like, the way that they're delivered, too, it's like a really breathy announcer reading a script. And why would, uh, like, a humanity organization on the, the last fringe of society deliver information that way? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, is that a Doomicorn Super Shotty skin? No, it's the, it's the Maker skin. Um, which, hold on a second, I need to check something. I, uh, I had to, I had to re, I had to re, um, refocus my camera. 
since it's not pointed at the room anymore and I just want to make sure it's actually actually focused correctly and pointed straight at me. Getting this thing leveled and pointed at me is very difficult. Um, <laughs> no, that looks fine. Oh, probably zoom it in a smidge though. That might have been why I thought the framing was a little funky. Oh, maybe a little much. Sure. It's not bad. Seems a little, seems a little down. That's why it was zoomed out, so the framing felt off. Or so many man, working. Uh, oh, I guess we are doing center camera. Ooh, I forgot about that. You're right. I'm supposed to supposed to be doing normal camera, which I guess will help me see if the the framing is identical to what I remember or not. Chris Kane, thank you so much. It is another great month of quintessential gamer content. Yes, I will be here playing video games. Don't worry about that. Now playing center gun like original Doom. I'll get there eventually. This is my like. This is my normal playthrough, so I'm playing it, like, normal video game style. Mmm, yeah. Okay, so I had it more up and more more zoomed. Uh, shit. Hold on a second. Any thoughts on what the single-player DLCs might be? No? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that there's just more levels. Just more, like... Just more levels, baby. Um... If there are more levels, then they can they can kind of extend the value of those through master levels and things like that. So that's that's kind of what I see them doing, is uh, adding more base geometry so they can just create more extendable challenges out of it. Sorry, guys. Uh, man, adjusting my camera sucks. I uh, there's a level on it, but it's impossible to see. Uh, and every and it's like a ball joint too. It's a ball joint, so it's not X and Y. Which means I, I can't like lock it down in one axis, which would be the best possible solution. So like whenever I try to move it up or down, it ends up not being level. And then I gotta dig with it more. And then like try to find a reference point on the wall to uh, to level it to. There's a there is a bubble level on it, but it's it's not super useful. Okay, that looks like it's got it. That looks like <laughs> I'm still saying Quad City DJs. Jeez. Um, dang it. Sauce boss. You gotta fight the sauce boss. Okay. Sorry, sorry about the slow wind up, guys. I feel like PvP, I actually haven't, no. I wanted to go through the I wanted to absorb all the campaign lore before I started doing that. Um still shit. I'm still clipped off the top. Uh well let's hope that I cropped it. Man, webcams. Am I right? Am I right, guys? Okay, I did crop it a little bit. There we go. Now I'm over here. Except it's... Why is it cropped like that on this scene? Hmm... Oh, well that's weird. Usually cropping is by scene. Or maybe I did it... Maybe I did that for some other reason. What was I thinking, you guys? Also, ah, move the, move the alerts. Everything's going weird. There, there's a, there's our webcam. One hundred percent, technically sound. Always gaming. It's been a little over a week and still, still says Cheetah in Quad City DJs. It's a, it's a memory of the good times. Okay, remember? Oh, right. Let, let's hit up the Repertorium for some of that. Uh, yeah. Heat Blast, Cacodemons with Arbalest. Alright. Ooh. Yeah, I got like the d demonic ruin. Rune skin. Do we have a cough drop? I think I might have one. Day 11 of home quarantine. I've not put on pants today. Nice. Nice. I got it because I don't want to get. I don't want to get cancelled on Twitch. Yeah, it looks- it is- it is nearly the exact same as, uh, the 2016 Gauss Ganon. I really expected to complete the weapon masteries on a single playthrough, or is there a new game plus? Oh, it's- it's totally possible to complete them on a single playthrough. Um, I guess- I guess I haven't tried, but... Can you replay levels with cheat codes on Ultra Nightmare? No. Cheat codes are not allowed on Ultra Nightmare. You have to- you gotta be honest. BFG division already? Oh, 
Alright. There are plenty of times where you can you can grind out weapon upgrades, the Repertorium being one of them. As long as it's not for oh shit. Okay, so you definitely you lose extra lives in the Repertorium. Like this is more combat, but I'm I'm mostly thinking of in terms of like an Ultra Nightmare run. How do you safely get upgrades? And it seems like they've pretty wisely made it so there's no safe way to be in combat. If you're in combat, you can get murdered. Because you can't... I don't think you can... You can get free deaths in the Repertorium. Shit. Damn it. Okay, I gotta stop. I gotta stop dicking around. Or do I? No, I gotta... Wow, that sucked. Ugh. Yo! Didn't expect it to come around that way. Well, this is going terribly. The, the, what is it? Corpse? I can't remember his name. The Shield Man. It's such a little fucking troll. That's a really cool enemy design. Oh, the life's safe file. Oh, that was safe file after you beat the story, huh? Yeah, maybe. Filed my taxes and back to reprise my role of Horn Chat member. Well, you picked a good time because I'm enjoying a cheeky bev and uh, playing some Doom. Slayer Gates feel like a super no-no and -no ultra nightmare. So it's it's yeah. I wonder. Like I haven't used the um, the Ultra Crucible or whatever, so I don't even know how vital that is to beat the end of the game. I also don't know how vital it is to get those weapon upgrade points because that's kind of the big thing about the Slayer Gates is you get three, and. Uh, Weapon upgrades were 100% life-giving in 2016. Unmaker is the shite in, in Ultra Nightmare? Okay. Oh, it's shite in Ultra Nightmare. Gotcha. Captains, I'm, I'm glad you're here attempting this shit so you can feed me info. Okay, so not worth it to do Slayer Gates then. Oh, uh... Kuzmata Weed? You're uh, heading out? Kuzmata Weed? I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, bye! <laughs> if you're leaving. Hmm. You don't permanently lose ammo or extra lives in the Repertorium. Okay. So, uh... Captains, I'm curious. Ha have you gone into the Repertorium on Ultra Nightmare? If you can go into the Repertorium and not die uh, on Ultra Nightmare, that's that's big. That's a big deal. Oops. I make kind of mad for the amount of effort you, get into, you put into getting it. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I kind of get it. It's they can't, they can't undo the game with an upgrade like that. Oh, I have, uh, I have batteries to spend. Might as well go get that suit point. Watch you on a twenty-five-year-old CRT reference monitor. It looks dope as fuck. Hell yeah! Lishin lad, you were you're living the dream, man. You're, you're living in the golden age still. I'm glad it looks good though. I I have put an amount of effort into trying to get the stream looking and running as. As good and proper as I can. I'm about to rip a Torium, R.I.P. I'm about to uh, get a little audio upgrade, too. The thing is, like, Bruce has some gear 
that I need, and I don't know how to get it from him to me. Uh, ah, gross, arm pimple. Um, if only there was some kind of futuristic courier service. That was the wrong door to open. Crap. I wasn't even paying attention. Then Bev's already ch already uh already coming in. Oh yeah, Rez. So I'll have a it's a different mic into with a cloud lifter into a dedicated mix mix like what is it called the Scarlet I like eight one one eight I eight I think is what it's called. Um, we use those for the uh, the uh, the drunk stream. Uh, what we boy it was. Huh. We tried our best, Rez. We tried our best to to route the uh, the deck through. Um, oh, sorry, guys. Back's been really itchy lately. We tried our best to route the um, the mix board through Reaper to make Reaper act as a deck, so that we could actually pull more than two microphones into Windows. Didn't work. We just ended up using the monitor port and to line in. Because for some reason, over USB, Windows can only recognize two inputs. Uh, and we really couldn't figure out how to get Reaper to act as an as a DAC. Um, you'll have an excess of points after leveling up everything, so Slayer Gates aren't that necessary for Ultra. Okay, that's good to know. But yeah, so what I intend to do is is just use the one mic. Um, I can't remember the the model of the mic through the through the cloud lifter through the mix board into USB and bring in audio that way and. I think the audio fidelity, fidelity will be a lot better. The problem I have with this mic, it's a good mic, but my god, it's sensitive. Like, almost too sensitive. You can hear anything going on in this room. You can hear anything going on in the next room, and it would be nice to really, like, focus out the audio. Which which is weird, because this is supposed to be a cardioid mic, but, man, does it just grab everything. Um, to a I do have it, uh, I do have a com compressor on it. No, it's just, it's EQ. It's EQ into a limiter, yeah, but I, I am dumping gain on it to make it... Yes, the focus, focus right Scarlet, that's it. Yep, yep, yep. I have the two-channel one sitting on my desk in my mixing setup, acting as my DAC for my speakers. And my mobile rig uses the eight-channel big cousin of that, the Claret. Yeah, I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get the two-channel Claret, or Scarlet, because I'm only gonna need one mic. And maybe one if I have a, a visitor. But yeah, uh, and it's, it's nice and cheap. I've tried adding an audio gate. Um, yes. The gates that I found really pinch off the sound really bad. Um, like it, you, you, I lose a lot of the like warmth and texture of the of the spoken voice if I have a gate on it. Um, it's just that hard cut off. I can I can just hear it. It just sticks out to me so hard. And a lot of the uh, while OBS does support the VST plugins and stuff, and there's probably a good audio gate in there. All the good audio gates that I've tried to use, or all the audio gates I've tried to use, just sound really robotic and and. Uh, and aggressive. So, even if it's a cardioid, it's probably a condenser, so it's a lot more sensitive. I think it is, yeah. The Audio Technica 2020? Um, yeah, probably. And I really want that, uh, I consider... I consider, like, a big portion of a Twitch stream is the quality of somebody's voice. So I put... I put effort into making that sound good. Or, there are things that I, I choose not to sacrifice in, for the sake of vocal... vocal quality. That makes sense. So yeah, I could throw, I could throw, uh, I could throw a noise filter on there. I could throw a gate on there. I could throw all that stuff, and it just ends up sounding, it ends up sounding shitty and also kind of laggy. All that, all that processing. If I remember correctly, I think the mics you were using for the podcast were sure SM787Bs, which are fantastic dynamic vocal mics, and AT2020 is a condenser. Okay, yeah, we we got plenty of those mics for just general production. We were like, well, we're gonna do this stuff in the future. We might as well have decent audio gear for it. Um, and then, but but then we were like, wait, why should these mics just sit here? You can use one, I can use one. We just need another one. Gates won't do you much good in this setting. They'll end up cutting you off. Yeah, that was my experience. I, I tried adding a gate and yes, it would just sort of like chop off. You didn't get that nice like tail on the end of any speech that sounds natural and good. So yeah, also, uh, I don't mean to bring up uncomfortable things, Rez, but you talked about how you you got laid off. Complex. Is everything okay? This industrial campus was once the headquarters of the resistance. BFG container. Ooh, there might be lore here. Hold on. Oh, Tyke, where you got laid off too? Damn. Hopefully everybody's. Uh... Oh, it's Lauren Mipsum Lane. 
Uh, hopefully everybody's uh, getting unemployment, man. We've all paid taxes for years. Oh, event production, gotcha. There were no events, the company shut down, yeah. Um, event production is getting just annihilated right now. I feel so bad. Like, there's, there's... I remember... Good news for the faithful. I remember there being a spokesperson, this was like in 2007, 2008, at the economic downturn, and automotive makers were getting fucked because they were all pushing out all these giant SUVs, and suddenly when gas prices spiked, I remember there was this, there was this shitbag on the news who was like, there's no way the automotive manufacturer should have been able to account for this. I'm like, well, maybe if they weren't sociopathic assholes and weren't cranking out like, 15 mile or 15 miles per gallon vehicles, then they wouldn't be in this situation. So it's hard for me to feel bad. Damn it. Evacuation protocol. Uh, this is one circumstance where it's like, there's no way, man. Everyone is trying to do the right thing. Fucking unemployment. Also trying to do freelance audio mixing work. Trying to get some music and also get into into mixing and editing podcasts. Good for you, man. Get out there and hustle. There's a lot of things are moving into online media to sort of fill the void. Yeah. It's very smart. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. That at least, at least you're not, not in a real bad state right now. But I, I also want to just say, like, just in general, I really appreciate you sharing your experience and knowledge about audio uh, through Twitch because it's been super, super useful to to like gut check things. Uh, did you play the RE3 demo? Not yet. I will though. Whoa. How did that break so fast? That lock-on time is actually pretty quick. Huh. Might be changing my... Might be changing my mind about that a little bit. If you come over here, that'd be great. No. Stop it. Imp! Fuck! This is your fault. I had to leave my home for my own safety, which sucked? Ah, I'm sorry to hear that, Noel. Alright, three demos almost an hour long if you want to really walk around and read all the posters and shit? Okay. Yeah, Noel, I'm pretty sure you, this is where you get Hayden. Which. I'm not gonna get into it. Maybe there's why does that why does that keep happening? Why do I keep punching? Oh Maybe there's lore to it I why does that keep happening? Is my mouse messing up? Maybe Ah Jesus, maybe there's lore to it I don't quite understand, but I was kind of bummed at how they how they did my boy Hayden in this game. Big Danny time. Thanks for the sub, man. Um I really liked his character in 2016. I thought he had an interesting and believable amount of, like, assholishness about him. I, I really liked his I did nothing wrong sort of sort of whole, whole get down. Oh shit, I need to look at the level challenges. Runes, overload, to kill six demons. Like, at once or? Okay. Destroy. Okay, that should be pretty easy. A lot of Hayden's presence in this game doesn't have any of that nuance. Um... But maybe, maybe there's bits in the lore that I don't know. Um, I was, I was really excited. The way that 2016 ended, I thought Hayden's character had a lot of places to go. Um, especially with him basically electing himself as like, no, I don't need the Slayer for this. I'll do it. Like, we'll save Argent Energy. I'll save mankind. Everything will be fine. And clearly that didn't work out. And I was kind of hoping to get some payoff on, on that about him acknowledging it or talking about it or changing as a character. But instead, he just seems to be another Vega. Like, he's just another voice that tells you you can't do a thing and then you go and do it. And to a degree, that was kind of what he did in 2016, but there was motivation behind it. Why would he care now, you know? What I, what I really appreciated about Hayden is he seemed like he was always sizing things up and trying to figure out the best path. Like, he was always strategizing. He was always working angles. Um, even if even if the world was straight up getting destroyed, he was like, well, hold on now. We can't just go throwing everything out. God, this fucking... Like, don't go crazy. We still need this. And even after the Doomslayer had to, like, 
close the health portal and save humanity. He still fucked him over. Because he was like, I know what you're going to do. You're going to go and kill all the demons. Don't do that. Because we need that power, baby. Uh, but it doesn't really seem like there's any acknowledgement or payoff of that aspect of his character anymore. He fucked it. Um, he, his, his resistance got dicked. Yeah, yeah. There were a couple of lines that hint that he's still in the game, but I was hoping to see, like, remorse or acknowledgement that he did the wrong thing. Maybe, like, gratitude that the Slayer is still here. Like, none of that. He just showed up and, uh... I thought it was implied Hayden was another interdimensional being. When you see your divinity in the flashback, the priest has the same line as Hayden when he gives you the first Argent Cell in 2016. That would suck. Hayden had a pretty definite backstory that did not lean on that. I'm really hoping that... I would... Ew. <laughs> I would very much prefer it if the game did not try to get supernatural with all of its characters. Um... 166 calories. Baby food, wet cat food, and vomit. Delicious. Ah! Rock on, the lock-on rockets are pretty good. Ever since they took out the, like, damage over time of the remote rockets, maybe that is the absolutely viable... Maybe that's a way to make, uh... Make the rocket launcher good again. Fuck. There we go. Isn't this the level that introduces the fucking Marauders? Ugh. God, I hope not. God, I hope not. Also, God, that, that like, base overload when you when you hear a grenade explode? Ugh, so good. Well, we've been playing Doom not very long. I want to say, like, 20 minutes. And most of that has been me, like, uh, talking about lore. So, talking about lore, uh, boring everybody with trying to readjust my camera. Although, player jification, I, like... I like your name quite a bit. Hey, Moose Mulligan. How you doing? Arbalest is more effective against airborne enemies. Is that like a is that like a mechanical thing? It actually does more damage? Or is it just mechanically better? Oh, Cohen Klinger. Sorry, I, I missed your uh, your resub. Still new to Twitch. Been a fan ever since the text is behind the screen day. Stay frosty. Hey, likewise. Cheers. Hmm. I did not know that. Huh. That's weird. I usually just use it as just like point damage of, of like super shotgun to, to ballista to super shotgun is, or like blood punch, um, uh, frag grenades, whatever. It does more damage. Interesting. How you liking Doom? I love it. Warning. Love this game. Headquarters is under attack. You can use the chainsaw before you run out of ammo. I don't believe you. Also, what does this upgrade even do? Um, drinking full charge. Oh, okay. Interesting. Mick Gordon fucking killed it for this game. Sound design is still fantastic too. Yeah, uh, Rez. What? Oh, Skullzors, Thanks for the prime sub. What? Uh, what really blows my mind about Eternal is that they can hit you with this like ridiculously punchy, intense, crazy, crazy mastered soundtrack, and then somehow also have video game sound effects that are uh, that are audible over all of that. Over all that ridiculousness, you can still hear the chirp of your, like, cooldowns coming up, and you can still hear, like, you can hear what you need to hear. You can hear, uh, screams from enemy types. I wonder if it's something like, in, a, in game mixing, you're just like, okay, you can make, yeah, the head plops, uh, the head plops are silly, the, the gulps from the caca demons are pretty comical. I wonder if they, if like when they're talking or when they're 
examining the audio spectrum of a game, I wonder if they reserve certain frequency ranges for sound effects. They're like, here, this is the functional range of audio sound. And when you're making music, don't touch this frequency range. Because we want to make sure if we have a chirp for a cooldown or something like that, we can hit that frequency range and it'll peak out above everything else. I wonder if that's how they... I feel like I feel like audio mixing and that to that degree is such a black magic. Oh, don't forget secrets. I was forgetting secrets. Thank you. Have you used the classic weapon sounds? I played with it a little bit, yeah. I don't see any secrets that I missed, really. I think that's really... That's thanks to really clever audio mixing. Like, I hear the music slightly duck when there's certain sound effects. Okay, yeah. Ducking is certainly a way to do it, too. Ah, that makes sense, yeah. That's that's probably a way easier way than what I was thinking. Of just saying, you don't get the 4K range. Like, that's for sound effects, asshole. To turn down music in games, this game I want to turn it up. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, what are the what other gun challenges do I have? Arctotron, Cacodemons. Okay, I just have to remember that. Jesus. It's an eight string guitar drop to, uh, drop F sharp to tune so the frequency range is real. Yeah. The next level is my favorite visually and musically so far. Which one is that? Master Ericus, thank you for the reset. Sadly due to ye old virus, I have to pause my sub for next month, but I'm loving the content. Dude, don't worry about it. Do not worry about it even one second. If you if money's tight, money's Oh my god. If money's tight, even for a little bit. Keep your money. Take care of yourself. Ah! Oh, Phobos? Ooh! It's good to bet on them doing that too. It's a common thing to do, not just in music, but in TV and film. There's a whole psychoacoustic part to that too, just like how humans react to certain frequencies. I've noticed that in myself. Um, that for me, the for some reason, the 4K range is really grating and aggravating. Um, so whenever I do EQ for like music or, or even my own voice in the stream, why do I keep... Why am I... There is no I guess... Oh, I guess it automatically melees if you dash into a prop or something like that. Uh, on the frequency range stuff? Yeah. I, uh... I always, I always, you know, bring up bring up the high range, bring up the, the mid range... Or, sorry, the low. Bring up most of the mid, but I always drop a little bit at 4K. Because that's, for some reason, that frequency just, just makes my ears go weird. You need to check the map. Look like I was missing anything. But I will. What headset are you using? Uh, it is... Hold on a second. I'll tell you shortly. If I kill this man's... Okay. Sennheiser HD58X. 58X. 2 to 6 are super... Ooh. Sibilant? Sibilant? I feel like phonetically I know what that word means, but what does sibilant mean? Check the map. Ah, is this what you're referring to? Super bright and harsh, gotcha, yep. Yeah, uh, that, that has been my experience as well. Ah. Oh boy. Yeah. Shit, man. I did not know he was there. Shit. I'm in the same position I was in before. Ah! Those, um... 
I, it's so weird that those ground things track you. Wait, what's how? How does the Aerosmith's already do mic checks? Can you remember how to pronounce the company? Yeah, I, I thought about it. All those homing attacks are annoying as hell. Yeah, I guess you're intended to jump or just not be on the ground, maybe? Embrace your suffering, young man. I'm playing pretty loose right now, guys. Uh, because I am already... Well, I haven't eaten a lot today. I'm doing that on purpose because Steph and I have a, a pretty amazing meal tonight planned. But It's an SNL reference. Oh, sorry. I missed it. Old Tom Hanks SNL skit. Okay, my bird. Your father's still hip. He knows what's cool. to game and talk, bro. Ah, uh, no, no worries. I mean, oh, I appreciate that, but also, I'm, I'm, my game's just gonna be a little bit off for a while. Cause I'm taking it easy. I'm taking it easy. Sometimes you gotta take it easy, you know. I don't know why I miss that every time. Yeah, Coconut King. I mean, it's certainly no secret in game dev to have a bunch of go oh, like colored goodies fly out of something. That's been a that's been a secret ever since. I guess Diablo might have been the first game to really, really nail that. But, uh... This, this game makes it a core mechanic, which is nice. Uh... Laggy F, yes, I am running a two, a two PC setup. I'm not playing in 4K though, I'm playing in 1440, which is kind of halfway to 4K. But yeah, I, uh, I started hitting problems with OBS where it was dropping frames because my video card was getting maxed out. By Assassin's Creed Origins of all things. Yeah, 2K is actually, yeah, I guess that is what people call it. Um, so, the... I did a lot of reading and a lot of researching about OBS and the way that like video cards generate frames and try to pass them to an encoder and all this shit. The conclusion that I came to at the time, may not be the case anymore, was that if your video card is hitting like 80-90% uh, utilization, there's no way to make it not drop frames. Even if, even if your display is 60, it will not grab 60 for the stream. So the only solution was to offload all of that encoding and video generation to another computer. Which is what I'm doing now. And hopefully that results in a crystal clear, buttery smooth stream experience for everyone. Does anyone know why Doom 2016 was 60, but Eternal is only half the size? What black magic is this? I know that Eternal, well, Eternal doesn't use mega textures anymore. Um, so. Makes sense, I'll have to follow with such. So, you're welcome to try, but biting off two PC setups and introduces a whole lot more, whole lot different and, you know. There's problems in one way, there's problems in the other, basically. My problems did not go away the second I introduced another PC, I'll say that. Attention, Samuel Hayden has fallen. The Ark is no more. Please evacuate. Like, that just happened? Oh, you. Whoops! I think you, you like, jump extra high if you try to jump out of a, uh, a meat hook. I feel like those are movement mechanics a lot to figure out. Oh, 
Ah! No! Damn it! Fuck! No, no! Fuck! Every time I pick up health, it's instantly gone! Yeah! What are the what are the blady boys called? Dead. They're fucking dead. <laughs> Bad time, fuck sticks. All good. All good answers. Woo! Doom 2016 is 59.3 on Steam right now, and Eternal is only 37.4. I'm downloading them both. If I could no, I mean. Keller, I believe you. Um, asset compression is a weird thing. Um, asset packaging is a weird thing. Dread Knights, thank you, Captain. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of black wizardry uh, that goes on inside of how game assets are stored and how they're distributed. There's a lot of like. So I can't I can't comment on this specifically, and I certainly can't comment on it uh, in the context of Doom 2016. But uh, there's a lot of good, really cool technical conversation, basically resulting from the PS5 and how it's changing storage architecture. And the the Series X is actually doing something similar. It has like a, it has a, a dedicated uh, storage compressor and decompressor, which is is also pretty awesome. But essentially, so here's Sorry. Oh, yeah, no worries. No worries, Keller. You're good. Um, data on physical hard drives is stored on a, a fucking platter. It's, it's a literal record. And like a record, data is only in stripes in the circle on the platter. So uh, to load data, you have to wait for the drive to spin to the point you want, and you have to wait for the read, the read head to get to that point in the circumference of the disk or in the radius of the disk. That takes time. So what often happens is that games will duplicate data at multiple points in the installation to make it be at spots on the disk that are in proximity to other assets that it needs. Um, yeah, there's seek times, there's also read times. Uh, so what could be the case, and this is just a theory, but what could be the case is Doom 2016 may have had a lot of duplicated assets that inflated its download or install size because of the, the attempt to optimize it for physical hard drives or to optimize it for home consoles. Sheep should be delicious. I agree. Sheep cookies, delicious. How does the lock-on compare to airburst? Does it make the rocket better? It makes it do tons more damage. Um, phase, I got... I was very used to using uh, remote because of the, uh, the damage over time effect you got in 2016. That is not in this game anymore. And the remote splash does very little damage. To the point where it's not even really useful to use it. it it's pretty good at wiping out minions, but everything's good at wiping out minions. So you don't really have to worry about it. The fucking plasma gun is good. The BFB. Slay burgers. The big fucking burger. Oh, that's great. It's big. Remote dead is still good for stumbling marauders. Ooh, Bill. I didn't think about that. Okay. Huh. And then yes, also yeah, 9x, the um, Doom 2016 used id Tech 6, I believe, which was an evolution of the Rage engine, which used the Mega Textures, which is that there's one giant uh, texture file that everything reads from. It uh, The attempt was, again, in resource-constrained console space, to be able to deliver fidelity at 60 FPS by having a mega texture so that you only gave it like memory addresses to read from one file that was always there. So you didn't have to keep pushing uh, data into and out of system memory. Uh, so that may also be another thing is that it was, it was optimized for speed rather than install efficiency. Um, it seems like they got both with Eternal. Um, Cause yeah, it is, the the slow and the the small and still size. Aiden's outpost is blocked. Two peripheral. It's pretty wild. Identified. Calculating optimal firing path. Okay, Welsh. I'll try. Uh, 
You could use both turrets to clear a path. I will, I will try to use remote detonation for marauders, because I have been I have been looking for tools to deal with marauders. Um, and I don't have many. Micro missiles are good for literally the whole game. So yeah, it's weird. I don't use micro missiles much because are micro missiles good against medium-sized demons? The honestly, the thing I use heavy assault rifle for most is just staggering, staggering, uh, staggering minions. If I, if I need a uh, if I need a glory kill, if I'm low on life, the uh, the heavy assault cannon or heavy assault rifle seems the best at actually staggering them instead of killing them. Holy shit! Everything else seems just really good at killing them. It kills them too fast. It's a weird problem to have, but. The scope is more useful? Yeah. And the scope is really nice for just sort of surgically. surgically taking off uh, parts. Like, like so. Oh, you can't do that to the cyber, that's right. Oh, it's already out. Okay. We got some more, though! Oh yeah, the it's interesting how they in the in the early game the tools they give you is the grenade launcher on the shotgun or the scope. It's like one of the two. The scope works, so I guess you could pull off those shots with the grenade launcher. So I never felt like I needed it. You kind of don't, yeah. So is media sh is media share a good idea since a lot of people don't want to spend that much right now? Um, well, that's a good question. I guess I, I, I guess what you're really asking is is it responsible to give people the option to give you money? And I don't know that I need to make that decision for people. I've wondered about that a lot. Um, I don't know. I can I can try it, and if people are like, "Hey, I don't have money," then I'll just be like, "Okay," then I can just I don't know, just not do it. So that's a good question. I worry about that a lot. I do feel a. It's funny. I, I often feel the uh, moral ownership of people giving me money. You're on Twitch, the decision has kind of been made. Yeah, pick a part, but you know, there's there's degrees to it. How much do you want to lean into it? And how much do you want to try to incentivize people to give you money that it really comes down to like you have to trust that people know how to spend or save themselves and I don't know. If if somebody if somebody gets in a bad spot with money because they wanna watch or wanna push an push an internet video to the stream. Am I, am I expected to be responsible for that? Maybe? I I would feel that way, yes. I would feel bad about it. And if that person was like, hey, I, I paid for 50 videos on your media share, but now I can't pay rent, I'd feel awful. And I would probably be like, okay, give me your PayPal and I'll refund all that shit. Um, so, I, I understand. I understand where you're coming from. But at the same time, one thing I've tried to do a lot and it's not just because I stand to gain from it now, but also just in general, is really appreciate that people are smart and they have the right to decide what they do. And if I have to trust that people are responsible, um, if DSP wants to declare bankruptcy over a WWE gotcha game, that's his life and you can subscribe too. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I guess that's true. I, I will admit though, I, I have, I have become Increasingly conscientious of that aspect. I guess. I guess I don't want to assume that people are worse off than than they tell me they are, and if they choose to spend money on things like that, or if that gives them, if that gives them, you know, happiness in a way that spending the money in another way wouldn't, then it's not for me to tell them that's wrong. Not to question the responsibility of it, I just felt like if you did it and no one could spend anything, it just wouldn't be that active. Just a random thought. I mean, you're right, Solo. If you know, and if it's not active, then we just won't do it. It's that simple. Uh, or I'll just I'll just play a bunch of videos myself. Um, so it's a 
yeah, it's it's worth it's worth thinking about, and it's something that's been on my mind for sure. Uh, I've been thinking about that a lot. Uh, so someone two cycle Marauder by using Ballista Super Shoddy Ballista on Nightmare. Okay, so my instincts aren't wrong, PGX. I just don't think I had. I don't. I just don't think I had enough of a sample or a data sample set. Um, but yeah, and then Trey's got cute seal videos that I'm gonna need to see. So I, if if I'm hanging out and everyone in chat is like, I really want to send this video, but like I gotta buy food or I can't pay rent, we'll figure it out. I'm not gonna sit there and be like, come on, ah, assholes, get, get where's my money? You have to pay me money to watch videos somebody else made. It's not gonna get there. Um, but I do understand your concern, because I share it. We'll have a good time regardless. Use channel points? Yeah, there's always- there's that. What? Hell yeah! Slayer Gates! This is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna have to get more whiskey before we start this. Is the stream over? Parker, does it look like the stream is over? The stream is not over. Perhaps I was speaking in a way that sounded made it sound like it was. No, it is not. I'm gonna, I'm going to, going to continue playing Doom. Hey, look at you. <laughs> uh, warning though, I'm enjoying, or rather, I'm celebrating wrapping up a, a pretty big chunk of work, so I'm having a drink or two, which means I might not play so good. Uh, no L. What is Media Share? It's this weird thing on Twitch that I, uh, I still have trouble wrapping my head around. But essentially, you can donate an amount of money to buy a certain amount of seconds. So like, you put in a YouTube link, you make a donation like two bucks, and then your your uh, donation will cause the video to play for everybody for a certain amount of time. It's like a moderation queue that I manage of people submitting links to play, and then we just kind of go through them. So you can submit like music videos or weird memes, and it's just like, it's, it's kind of, a, it's kind of like show and tell. But you know, with somebody, me, skimming money off the top, I guess because I'm organizing it. Yeah, McCray, this this game is so good. This game is so good. We have so many good games, dude. The one two of like Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing and now even Half Life Alex. Yes, chat jukebox, exactly. Exactly. Um It's it's just been so so nice. Yeah, hopefully everybody's still in having like a uh, fun employment out there. Hopefully things are getting too raunchy. I'm gonna I'm gonna slide this out there too. If you're having a really hard time, just Hit me up on Twitter. We'll figure something out. Because um, I, I am I have the luxury of doing pretty okay because I worked my ass off for the past couple of years and also have just worked my ass off just now. I don't know how much longer it's going to last, but some people are not fortunate enough to be in a line of work that's bizarrely still active. So, yes, Shifter. It is the same non-sex version of Teledildonics. So, I've been. Uh, I've been getting out there and trying to trying to do some stuff. So, what's your favorite beef up from 2016 to Eternal? Uh, I just like the dash. I think the dash is such a cool. I feel like everything started with the dash. I feel like they added dash to Doom, and then everything flowed from there. They're like, well, now the demons are too slow. Let's make the demons faster. Okay, now the fighting's good, but like, anyway, we got some lore. Oh, Bruce is raiding me. What's up, bros? Hey, gooses. I'm not quitting this time. I'm not I'm not immediately shutting down. I'll actually be streaming for a little bit longer here. Uh yeah, I know I'm I'm not gonna ban anyone either. Welcome everyone. However, I ha I am one whiskey in, and I'll probably be another before the stream's over. So my doom skills are gonna start slipping. Uh just so you know. <laughs> What's up, Bruce? Oh wait. Wait, hold on. There's someone in chat saying no with a uh oh. Actually that's fine. That could have been dangerous. Uh it seems like I'm gonna have to ban somebody. There's just so many gooses. What is this from? I don't even know. Whatever. Uh, yeah, my wallpaper is a is a is a rotating, a rotating roulette of surprises. I did not beat Alex. Uh, did Bruce finish it? Is that why he's wrapping up? <laughs> uh, but the, welcome to the nightmare slash lore playthrough of Doom. Uh, I'm going to read this now. I've been cast out into the nothingness, huh? Wait, what's going on? Did something break? Oh no. You guys are scaring me now. Take off Doom Guy's shirt. Oh it's it's always off. No! You guys are you guys are you guys are scaring me here. What whiskey is that? I mean this is this is just Jack and Coke Zero. <laughs> it's pretty basic. 
Not part of the raid. I was here the whole time. I just like the goose. I do too. Thank you, Digital Tears. Uh, this is our channel now. Sure, take it. Mechanized and highly augmented, the Cyber Mancubus is equipped for frontline warfare. Equipped with a dual barrel arm mounted mortar cannons, the Mancubus's integrated weapon system utilizes the body's natural occurring biotoxins, refining this corrosive viscous membrane into a taxoplasmid, toxoplasmid ammunition feed. Siphoned from the spinal gland and funneled intravenously to the weapon conversion system, the corrosive secretion is discharged by an alternating firing mechanism, which disperses the toxoplasmid as either a heated projectile or ignited fluid. The latter resulted the latter resulting in a flamethrower like incendiary spray capable of burning through armored plating. Cool. Did we raid a stream that just ended? No. So wait. Everyone's everyone's saying the stream's not working. Yeah, I guess I guess the raid got bonked. Uh it's I'm still oh. Do you guys hear that that doom music? Oh, Twitch is dying? Oh, that sucks. The Raiders are having issues. I I don't know what to say. Uh, okay. When I first clicked in here, it said he was offline, but refreshing the page worked it. Okay. Yeah, Twitch Twitch bonking me, man. Twitch, Twitch trying to hold me down. Ain't that the way. <laughs> D-leveled. I want you to be here. Yeah, maybe switch just to my page. I mean, maybe yeah, maybe Bruce's host got bonked. Yeah, Twitch Twitch can't handle everyone being at home. Press Alt and F4. Classic, classic troll. I want people to be here for the the Slayer Gate. This is gonna be. Hmm. Oh, Twitch is dead. Is a problem everywhere. Damn. Might be specific ISPs. Could be. Uh... That sucks. All the channels are offline and I don't know what's going on. Damn. Alright, well, let me get my ass kicked by this Slayer Gate. Oh shit, you're a big boy. Fuck, I'm out of ammo already? Sir? Oh! No, we're going for it. No, we recovered! Crap, 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 Ooh, There's a lot of boys here, a lot of big boys. A lot of big chonky boys. Shit, I needed that, come back, okay. Turn up the music. I can't, I can't do anything right now. I'm trying to stay alive. Fuck. Why is this fucker not dead? Ah, we got more lore though. Whew. Oh, double jumper dash. All right. Demon lords to the black soul pits of Babel. The tyrants have long served as wardens and slavers of the infernal pits. Weaponized and cybernetically altered by the UAC, the tyrants are tasked with overseeing the collection and extraction of sin-branded human souls from the mortal world. The role in hell ordained by the unholy sigil of the elder hell gods. Christ, what a phrase. A sadistic master of lesser demons, the tyrants are feared for their cruelty and malice. Oh yeah. Well, man. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta bring Shenmue. We gotta bring Shenmue back. That game, that game was a gift. I do love the, like, bringing the bass back in during the loading screen. That is such a cool audio effect. Makes it feel like you're kind of coming back. Or that... You just got done listening to something really loud, and now you're back into it. Also, the, this dude is like... I swear to god, he should be dead by now. Oof. Woof. Uh, dang. How many times did Shenmue crash on you? It hasn't crashed at all. Oh, hey, BM's above. Good to see you again. 
he's not dead, but you definitely are. Yeah. Shit. Fuck. small. Thank you. Fuck. I fell off the map. Ugh. What? I think that dude had to think about jumping for a really long time. Like, eh. Here we go. Okay. Thirty-four of Isabella Doom Guy. Oh, of course there is. How is it? Also, I feel like Isabel's probably the one taking control of that situation. Shit! Who's, who's shooting missiles at me? Ah! Yep. That's right. Please, dude. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Okay. Fuck. I need. I need glory kill. Thank you. There we go. All right. There's my boy. What? There we go. I think we got it. It's working now. Probably should have waited. Probably should have waited. Ow. Oh, God. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, this, this game goes very, very hard. You need to keep remembering the... What a fight! Yes! God damn! Was that a bone crunch? It was something, dude. Like, shoving the dude's hand into his own head. <laughs> God, I love it! Ah! How do you feel about the new game, Doom game, starting with Doom 3, having its own lore, but sharing bigger elements? Well, Shifter... Doom Eternal kind of undoes all of that. I mean, I'm not gonna... Could you see... She chat as Twitch died. I mean, it seemed like people were mostly just trying to figure out what was going on, right? I'm gonna finish Doom on stream. Yes. Yes, of course. Haha. 
Bruce actually messaged me. He's like, oh, I just missed you. And I'm like, no, you didn't. I'm here. Twitch is just being weird. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Nightmare. Um, this run, basically, this is my scouting run of Nightmare. Then an extra lives run where uh, I play through Nightmare with the extra lives turned on. And then if I can do that, then Ultra Nightmare, which will take a while. That'll take a minute. Um, unless... Unless... It's hard for me to imagine getting into a getting to a level of competency with this game where I don't, I'm not constantly terrified of just dying on nightmare. But uh, Brawly the Pitbull, thanks for the resub. Did you finish Half Life? No, I didn't. Uh, I see no stream. Damn. Well, thank you. F Shit. Then you didn't see my thank you. Well, thank you for uh, thank you for the prime sub regardless. Wild Reaper. Hey, how's it going? Shout out Bruce for breaking Twitch. Yeah, I guess. Bruce just just too strong, too many viewers. Oh, Brawly, you got in. All right, good. Sounds like it's it's very slowly coming back. Shift tab X five. Oh wow, I'm flushing the cash, huh? Well, I'm glad it worked. He leveled. Andrew, thanks for the resub. Good to see you again. Welcome. Preview picture of your stream has the guy with his hand shoved in. Perfect. God, if I could freeze it like that, that'd be great. It's probably a good thing that Twitch doesn't allow you to set thumbnails for streams. Uh, people, I mean, I think then the thumbnail game would just get as ridiculous as YouTube's, but... Uh, sometimes you get lucky. I think I was playing one game where like there was some tit monster and that was the thumbnail, and I'm like, yes! I bet if you're playing like a titty game and you get a really lucky thumbnail that your uh, your viewership goes up for a hot minute. A tit minute. God bless tits. Where am I going? Oh, I have to go. I think I just have to go this way. So many titty thumbnails of it were. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's... I feel like... Uh, I feel like that's why Just Chatting does so well. Because the thumbnails are titties. And, like, yeah, welcome to YouTube, dude. It's, it's really interesting, like... Everyone who... It's a phase that seems to have come and gone, which, good. But everyone who's mad about it, it's like, man, you guys have no idea. You guys are like six years behind of, uh, and also just like, also welcome to the human race, dude. Yeah, everyone likes looking at titties. Welcome. Did you think you were going to be immune? <laughs> everyone competes with titties. They have, they have a fearsome and righteous power. Respect for doing first run nightmare. I actually... I mean, I, I don't want to I don't want to throw your respect back in your face, but I actually didn't. So I I did a I did a review playthrough of the game on Ultra Violence, and it it was it was rough enough. Where the f ah. oh maybe I should follow the compass, which doesn't have an objective right now. <sighs> Seems to want me to go over here, but it's locked. Is there a stupid switch I gotta hit? Oh, thank you. Yeah, later. Thanks for the resub. You're my saving grace. Working from home from Australia. Keep up the great work. I'm glad to. I uh, it actually makes me pretty happy to think that I can fill that fill that role for someone. I have I have a pretty strong attachment to some streamers that I used to watch when I'd be working from home, or if I ever got a day off work and I just like ch kind of chill out with somebody in the background. Started on ultraviolence, had to put it down. Dude, no shame in that. No shame in that. This game is this game is intense. It's weird because it's it's not even intense in like the Dark Souls way, which everyone likes to pat themselves on the back for being good at. Oh, here we go. Um, like Dark Souls is hard, but mostly it just plays off off of you not being patient or not like learning, um, not not really paying attention to the feedback a, a game is giving you. This game is is fucking hard. Like you have to pay attention to the feedback and be good at hitting buttons. I feel like to some degree, apart from just properly timing dodges input complexity in dark souls is fairly minimized whereas in this game you got to hit a lot of buttons they all do something and you got to hit them at the right time keep going through the missions keep going forward and you'll do it yeah memory feels so much harder than the other difficulties you adapt i think it gets oh yeah these things i don't like these I don't like these. These these feel dumb to me. Subject analysis January twenty fourth, twenty one sixty three. 
There is no chance that the... Sun they did... They did mention that a lot of the human race is getting very superstitious and religious. So these... He is these audio logs kind of lean into that. So it's not unsubstantiated, but... But the I'm super not a fan of the idea of just the Doomslayer being a visitation of some concept. Uh, or being a spiritual force. I like the idea that the Doomslayer is a person with volition and a past. Scientific community agree with the assumption by some of my colleagues that he is, for lack of a better word, a god, an avenging angel. She is very breathy. Hand of doom here to save humanity. Yeah, unwound Caesar. You're kind of right, actually. I don't like this doc getting hot and wet over Doomslayer because that's me. The identity. You can't take my doom boner. Wait. Also. That doesn't count as a codex entry, does it? Oh, there was lore! Guys, we got lore on lore. We didn't read about the Baron of Hell. Forgot about the chain gun. The Fireborn Barons have evolved, descendant clan of the Baron Hell breed, and are indigenous to the caustic, scorched hellscape bordering the Burning Abyss. What? What a sentence. Jesus Christ. A landscape of cragged spires forged from unbreakable blackstone, tempered by the crashing waves of mag magmatic tide. These sulfuric plains of hell have long served as banishing grounds, a place of exodus to which the damned are sentenced as their final destination. The fireborn barons have evolved in this environment, sustaining themselves on the remnants of the damned, growing obsidian carapaces, and in time becoming infused with the very incendiary matter of hell itself. Yeah, Captain. This lore is so awesome. It is, it is the most righteous... Uh, the most righteous, uh... Ah, oh wait, log one. Okay, good. It said log two on the screen. This catastrophe we currently find ourselves in has... Well, it, it has definitely shaken my scientific resolve. <laughs> Quintonius. Regular barons of hell, boring and lame. Fireborn barons, metal and tight! Yeah. Big tight asshole. Hey, Steph. Hey, Lawrence. We just learned about the fireborn barons of hell. They're like normal barons of hell, but they come from the fire abyss, yeah. which is where people are banished in hell because it's nothing but lava and obsidian. But they grew up there eating the damned, so they have thick obsidian hides, and they're even more raw than most barons of hell. Um, so that's cool. I have a question. Yeah. Like what people think are delicious, or do you think that they're like what evil people think are delicious? Tastes like Mountain Dew Code Red. Oh, why? Why do you? Do they have teeth? Because if they have teeth, they won't if they're eating Mountain Dew Code Red. Oh, the Barons. Souls. Let's see. Let's see. I think the Barons have more of a beak. Uh, no, they have teeth. They definitely have teeth. They're, car they're carnivorous teeth too. In hell, right? I mean, that's no, I mean, I don't actually. Yeah, I guess, I guess people yeah, hate dentists. Dentists could be evil. Yeah, so if they're they, drilling your teeth. There's gotta be some in hell. But do, do the like demons get like excited to go to the dentist because they're like, ooh, it's my pain appointment? Or maybe that maybe you're right. Maybe they do taste like Mountain Dew Code Red because then they go to the dentist and then the dentist. It's like it's like a snake eating itself. It's just an arborous, if yeah. you will. Maybe. Yeah, Hell I can see that. Hell is a flat circle. I think, yeah. I think the demons enjoy going to the dentist, but they enjoy even more making tortured souls in hell go to the dentist. I mean, that is kind of in lore. Uh, there's a thing later about how, like, to extract the soul energy from someone, you have to torture them to the point that their soul wants to leave the body. And then you can, like, suck it out like a vacuum cleaner. So that's what hell is. It's, uh, it's a bunch of demons torturing people to get their life energy out of them because hell is basically a giant power plant in Doom. But, so what happens to the the corpse just rots? Yeah, basically. Or, or it turns into other demons. <clears throat> uh, there are... Basically, depending on the... How do... Like, but, uh, but whoa, wait. All right, before you get into this. Yeah, sure. So how... How does one decide that they want to become a demon? Is it just because... Oh, that's not up like, to you. Well, you would think that's... There are demonic masterminds that are pulling the strings. Average demons don't have much intelligence, really, it turns out. Well, 
Well, that's what I mean. I mean, like, so say that there's like a doctor or like a used car salesman. So more than likely the used car salesman. I mean, granted, I'm sure there's probably plenty of very nice, very honest used car salesmen. Sure. But typically, you would think that they would probably be like, oh, don't suck my life force. I want to be a demon. And then the demons are like, oh, one of us. And then they're just like, okay, cool. We'll make you a demon. Maybe. Um, but what if the doctor's like, oh, but I don't want to die. Make me a demon. And they're like, no, sir, you're too smart. Or ma'am, excuse me. Could be ma'am, sir. Doesn't matter. It seems like an average doctor is still not, not on the radar for demons. What... In the, in the, but schooling in, doesn't count, is what you're saying, in hell. I mean, it does to some degree, but I feel like you have to be... As, as Doom lore has as, uh, exposed to us, mm-hmm. you have to be like... What was that? There's somebody outside. Um, you, have to, you have to be like an Elon Musk type. And then they will... Crazy? Dating Grimes. Yeah, I mean both. Uh, but basically like somebody who can influence significant chunks of the human human experience um so like uh then then uh you would probably get brainwashed and uh this is why cults exist it's because demons are like brainwashing people to make them do what they want Uh so if you were leading a like tech company if you were a mark zuckerberg type Mm -hmm. then demons might have a use for you instead of turning you into or just harvesting your soul it's not so much yeah so okay but so but they're not really like demons on earth because they still look the same are we saying that they have now turned into full demons in their, like, like job? Like, they're trying to just blend in. Like, that dude well, right there, wearing, like, a suit and tie. There's and like, uh, I'm going into my marketing meeting. There is actually an example of... So, here you go. So, this is kind of an example of what somebody looks like pre- and post-demon possession, to some degree. Uh, although he's technically from another race. Also, but it's, like... I mean, that's that kind of makes you stand out. I mean, you can't go to the grocery like this? store. Well, yeah, but by the time you're sh- like... No, no, no. I mean, like, on the left. Like, you can't... Well, you we don't know what their grocery store is looking like. like. You're just like, ah, oh, I brought my my fancy gown and my crown. Like, people... You're going to go to a Denny's and somebody's going to be like, that dude's fucking... He, he is... He is possessed. Well, again, different cultures. So their Denny's is probably filled with people that look like that. Or rather, this gentleman was a, <laughs> oh, like a so high priest. Oh, so like back then. Well, this is, other it, dimension. Medieval times, yeah. if you fucking saw it. It's not medieval times. Like they're you from another, be, hmm. they're an entirely other race of people. Oh, uh, okay. You gotta, you gotta toss your preconceptions out the window. That, I mean, tech, they look human, but they're not technically human. Mm. So. Okay. Yeah. He's a high priest. Became corrupted with demonic energy. So... Technic- I mean, odds are pretty low that, that either of these gentlemen will be going to a Denny's in the first place because they're kind of more like... I mean, is, is Grimes going to go to a Denny's? Actually, she might. Is uh, Elon Musk? Actually, yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> Demons? Mark- Demons go to Denny's? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg's not going to go to a Denny's. He's- I bet you that they would go when like, they have the like um, like Lord of the Rings meals yeah. so that they could eat like a Hobbit for <sighs> second breakfast. I really want that now. The poppy bread? <laughs> Hobbit uh, cakes. Lembus bread? Yeah, the Hobbit <laughs> cakes. Man. I'm just saying. I mean, whatever the... Denny's and let them know. Whatever the Argenta version of a Denny's was, and maybe. Okay. All right, well, I'll let you be playing. I need to get more whiskey. I just wanted to have some chips and say hello. Those chips smell really good. I'm trying to I'm trying to not eat until our, our sweet dinner. It's almost here. Sort of. No, it's just... That's not that long. Doom's gonna carry me over. Did you enjoy Half Life, Alex? I'm digging up my Insta crashes. You got crashes? I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, mine's been really stable, and I am loving it. I am super loving it. So, uh, notice you can switch mods in, in the scroll wheel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, the radial menu. Yeah, you can switch mods before you pull the gun out. I feel like that's a pretty even exchange of time, based on how like it takes longer to use the uh, the weapon wheel versus. Just hitting the button. Oh, what VR set are you using? I got a. I was lucky enough to get an index, so that's what I've been using. Yeah, maybe that's why it's more stable. Who knows? Uh, okay, quick break. I gotta use the restroom. Get some more whiskey. I'll be right back. More Doom. More lore. More Denny's. Are you okay? Yeah. I got key card number one. <laughs> Watch out, Metal Gear ahead. Mission accomplished. 
Game Talk, Snake's Revenge, the next generation from Tiger Electronics. Right, I'm back. Um, what what did you miss out on? You know the place I tried to take you for your birthday? Yeah. And Naka? Yes. They were doing take-home bento boxes. Oh. But they're all fucking sold out. Oh, well, for now. I'm going to try. I'm going to try again. I put, I put us on a wait list. Okay. That sounds delicious. What, whiskey? Oh, just Jack. It's just Jack and Coke Zero. Vanilla Coke Zero, which is actually pretty delicious. Hmm? You missed Cowboy Bebop? What do you mean? Like in the bumpers or live act? Wait, what's... Now they're gonna have to tell me what the hell's going on. Ooh. Oh boy, I missed it. You didn't turn Omaha quarantines? With sipping Grey Goose? Cheers. Hey, cheers, man. I'm in the whiskey myself. Oh, your clip showed Bebop intro. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. That's a shame. Sometimes sometimes when one of the one of the gold standards shows up, it, I always I always stop and watch myself, but I missed out on that one. Can't win them all. Yeah. The best anime theme song? Yeah? I mean, Cruel Angel's Thesis, probably a close second, but I, yeah, I can't really disagree with that. Yeah, Netflix's live action show? Uh, I. That could be good. Um, let's see. Sorry, guys. It's just scrolling through some things. Scrolling, scrolling. All right. Moonlight and sets. What? What is that from? I don't know why I should have wasted the charge like that. Wow, that charge does not last very long, huh? Oh, whatever. Oh, Sailor Moon, okay. Sadly, there's a big black spot. Blank spot. In my, uh, in my anime knowledge with Sailor Moon, I haven't watched it. And people say Crystal is not super great either. Um... I did finally wrap up the Cell Saga in uh, Dragon Ball Z Kai this morning, so that's exciting. It turns out Gohan just needed to try hard, and he won, so that's cool. And I, I also love how- spoilers, by the way. Oh, we got some lore. I love how, like, Goku- or they're trying to figure out a way to get Goku to stay- to come back to life, and he's like, You know what? Don't worry about it! I- uh, they let me keep my body and I get to train up here! And then he's like, No, I know that it's not so good for Gohan and Chi-Chi, but I'll be okay! And it's like, holy fuck, man. <laughs> Chi-Chi is probably the most shit-on character in all of Dragon Ball. More than Yamcha. It's Chi-Chi. Do you have a particular favorite level from Eternal or just a new favorite enemy? Hmm. I don't know that I've played it enough to have, like, a good, uh... Yeah, also Chi-Chi was pregnant. Jesus. You can now watch Dragon Ball Z abridged. I probably, yeah, I guess I can now. Oh, the arc, yes. Uh, I don't know that I have a favorite level or enemy yet. I really like, what is the the corpse carrion? What is it called? Damn, the guy who puts up the shields. He's he's an amusing troll ass, and I like him for that. Carcass, there it is. God, he even looks he looks straight up like a quake enemy too. Yeah, Gohan never gets any better. Eh. Yep. I mean, yeah. Oh, Ride right on Shooting Star is absolutely the best ending theme. Ah, it's hard for me to disagree. I got to see the pillows live a while ago. That was awesome. All right, the arc. A global military crisis relief initiative established by the Allied Nations in 2151. The Armored Response Coalition is, a, is designed with the sole purpose to combat and contain the Hell Invasion. To succeed where modern militaries are ineffective, utilizing cutting-edge Argent-powered technology. Hayden, overseeing all aspects of ARC weapon and tech development, set about repurposing the UAC facilities on Earth, many of which were unaffected by the invasion due to their remote locations and high levels of automated security. These facilities, oper operated by powerful AI, 
are already designed for weapon development and mass production, meaning they could be repurposed overnight. I'm gonna go on stand, fight me. I'm not gonna fight anybody. This fucking marauder is a cunt. They're, they all are, dude. The marauder, I want, like, I respect the marauder as a, as a enemy type. It's, it's a really, like, powerful and, um, dare I say, brave addition to, uh, to Doom. Especially considering Doom's mechanics, so I thought I had Blood Punch. Now I do. I am worried that it's, it's too much. I'm worried that the, the Marauder actually does break fight encounters, and, and some of the, uh, some of the feedback I've seen from people who have been playing on, on Ultra Nightmare, and that does seem to be the case, is that the Marauders are just a big-ass problem. You missed a crystal? Oh, I did, you're right. It's right there, man. Uh, I've got box wine, bought bulk in case things are scary in Brooklyn at the moment. Dude, yeah, stay safe, stay inside. Let's all get crunk on Franzia. He needed like one other weakness to make him not so OP. Or he needs like, he needed to not shoot out fire dogs. Why does he shoot out fire dogs, man? Ammo sold out, yeah, good stuff. Doom gives you all these tools and marauders don't let you use them. Yeah, I I really like philosophically, I love the idea of a of an enemy that makes you consider space nice. Nice. Fucking nice. I love the idea of an enemy that makes you consider spacing inside of a fight with other other demons. Um I love the idea of like if you're too close to him, he shotguns you. If you're too far, he shoots the beams at you. If you keep him at a mid-range, he mellows out. And then opens his weakness. That's a really cool idea. Um, especially when you're, you know, juggling everything else. Of like, how do I get ammo? How do I get health? The idea that you have to consider spacing more than, like, I don't want to be close to things because they'll kill me. Is really, really neat. Super cool idea. But I feel like with the Marauder, they, they stack so many other things on top of that idea. That make that idea not quite work to maybe the degree it should, should have. Or, or it, it dilutes that idea with a bunch of other ideas that don't seem as consequential. What activates the dog? I, I think if you're far enough away, I don't know. And and this is kind of what I'm I'm telling myself is I love this, I love that reference in the music. So so good. You can hear it in the main the main menu theme too. What? Oh shit. Doom Slayer isn't Batman. He's not that good. I mean, in Eternal, they give you like a Batman array of, of gadgets and stuff to use, uh, and it, yeah, it feels weird to be locked out of using them. I feel like I feel like situationally removing tools is a really great way to. Uh, to make people, or to increase the significance of the other ones that are still available. It's a good way to, like, kind of push players into using stuff they may not use otherwise, but... Can't hear too well, what's the musical reference? Um, it's it's one of the tracks from the original Doom. Um, but yeah, giving, giving him the dash sucks, because even if you're trying to maintain distance, he can just close it. Fuck, man! Punch block? Oh, right! Yes, thank you! Put me about to die from fall damage. Thank you, thank you. There's even a big green thing on it. I think I never did that. I think I just made that jump. This is Dr. Elena Richardson. Log entry is 005. Subject analysis of Doomslayer. February 2nd, 2163. Maybe he is a god. Maybe he represents humankind's rage, their will to persevere. I am super not into the idea that, that like, collective belief manifested the Doomslayer. Also, the game kind of very literally, canonically, is like, no, that's not what he is. But, like, so, I don't know. These lore entries in the ARC broadcast are kind of weird, but... At least they're substantiated by the other lore saying, well, people are kind of losing their minds right now. 
because the human race is almost extinct. So they're getting a little, they're kind of losing their grip. That's the only way that this kind of fits for me. It still seems like it's, it's a little out of place. Sorry, I like the blood punch a lot too. I think every mechanic in the game is beautiful and works marvelously, and the Marauder is such a weird fit with all of them. Become that which would threaten our survival. I, yeah, it's just someone's interpretation. You're right. A relentless being of violence that knows no mention of the hesitation shown by our many leaders and politicians during our time of judgment. Can he overcome them alone? If he can't. We as a species, all species, will not survive. Also, Zero Cool, thank you for the... Thank you for the reset. I missed that a minute ago. Oh, I gotta watch... Oh, dude. I gotta watch Hackers tonight. I've been on this tear of just watching, like, every terrible movie on Amazon Prime I can find. I mean, Hackers is even on YouTube, isn't it? The best in, uh, in UK breakbeat... Going to an arcade and playing uh, Wipeout on a stand-up cabinet for some reason? I can do that. Hey, whoa. I feel like Marauders are cool, but they don't fit into Doom Eternal specifically. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at, too. It's like, I, I think the philosophy behind the Marauder is super, super cool. Especially the way it fits into a game like Doom. I just, I think the implementation might be a bit strong. Uh, I guess it's kind of where, where my head's at. Uh, I st I'm still confident, or rather, I'm extremely hopeful that uh, I will be able to find out some kind of tactic that works well on them. Or at least mitigates the randomness of them. That's kind of what gets me, is like... Even on, um, yeah, Young Angel and Angel Lee, yeah, topless no less, Jesus Christ. Uh, how, like, there's gotta be, a, even on ultraviolence, I felt like I, I, I adjusted to, I adjusted to the difficulty, I was playing well, I was using all my tools, and the Marauder would still shut me down. Like, I would, I would get to one Marauder and lose, like, three lives. And I'm like, how is this happening? I'm trying to do what they're telling me, but it, ah, it's just not working. I just reported a cool bug while listening to this in the background. Hack the planet. Nice. Are you QA, Misashi? Rollerblades, yeah. Look at this. This is like a plane just jammed through a building. Awesome. Rod is the one with the axe, yeah. The axe and the shield. It took me forever to figure out you were just supposed to jump to the plane. Like I, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was just like stage dressing, like a little prop. Oh, there's that musical. So good. That's I can't remember what level from. Uh... Oh, bug bounties legally hacking. Oh, okay, so like companies will post bounties to find security security loopholes and stuff in their in their software, and if you report it, you get money. Uh, I'm gonna do a Half Life Alex playthrough. I, I've already started one. I've been playing it every day since it came out. So yes, yes. Ah, uh, you can't land on that. Oh no, it's not geometry. Uh, Dark Halls from Doom 1. Thank you. I knew it was from Doom 1. I just, I don't know the track names from Doom 1. I, I only learned the track names because of Doom, uh, Doom 2016, actually. I didn't know that at Doom's Gate was like the... Uh, okay. But yeah. You can hear it in the main menu, too. Ah, so good. Found that Eternal has atmosphere that's as immersive as Bioshock. I yeah, I would say like running at a different BPM, but valid. I mean the levels are just so so. I don't know what the word is. like textured. I guess maybe the word I would use.
Whoa! Hello. Uh, no ammo? What? Okay, well. Lucky that I came stocked, I guess. Wah! Damn! That's what I get for assuming there's nothing behind me. What is hitting? Ow! Jesus. DJ and guitar kicks in and shit hits the fan, yeah. God, it's so good, though. It's... You could argue it's just like the same musical motif as when, when Doomslayer gets down and down, 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 down. But, ugh. Feels good every time. Man, it feels good. One thing that's missing from the game is Xenomorphs. I don't know why the spider mines uh, climbing on the ceiling. I knew that I need to fight aliens. Yeah! There have been a lot of shooters that have struggled with how to, how to recreate the aliens' experience, though, with Xenomorphs. Like... How do you keep them scary, but also make it so you can shoot a ton of them? Because that's what you want to do, right? Thank you, Kitsune, for the resub. Uh, it just reminds me, I gotta play Alien Isolation. Like, that game got it, you know? There was one alien, and it was a, it was terrible. And when it was around, everything was different. It makes me wonder if there's gonna be similar vibes with uh, Resident Evil 3. The Nemesis. Oh, do you level? You got insomnia? I'm sorry, dude. Well, not that this game is going to be good for it, but certain people have said that my streams are great to fall asleep to. Did you beat Alex? I did not. No. Sorry. Oh, somebody was asking. I don't know the ending of Alex. Nobody spoiled it for me. Somebody tried, but I just... Like, you can skim something and know it's a spoiler, and I just banned them, so... So, yeah, I am excited for, uh... I'm excited to finish Alex. I am not... So it's interesting. I'm not... I'm not as into Half-Life lore as I used to be. I would say around, like, episode one, episode two, I was super, super into it. Um, and then, you know, the years went by and that shit faded. Not not spoiling this game was probably more important to me. Uh, are you going to finish it tomorrow? That seems likely at this point, yeah. I will probably finish it tomorrow. I would love to see an It's Heretic game with this technology. Uh, with this tech, yeah. Um, if you're into that kind of game, though, I would recommend Medieval from New Bloods. Uh, it is a sort of, like, fantasy, dark, magic, arcane sort of themed game. And more like more like Hexen than Heretic, but, but you know, uh, shades of the same thing. Uh, I love that game. Uh, so I take, I take every chance I can to plug it. I feel like it didn't quite get the the attention it deserved. But if you're if you're into old school '90s uh, action arena shooters, definitely definitely check that out. New Bloods is kind of like New Bloods Night Dive in 3D realms, man. They're they're trying to keep 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 '90s PC gaming alive. And now it's software. Holy shit, man! What did we do? Medieval remake was dope. So different game, uh, but yeah. I, know, I didn't play that one. Uh, Draft Glue, thanks for the resub. Or thanks for the sub sub. Original sub, welcome. Uh, have you beaten this game on a lower difficulty already? Is this your raw playthrough on the hardest difficulty? Lash, I have already beaten it on a easier difficulty, so. I, but I, on that playthrough, I didn't get all the lore. I didn't read everything, and that's what I'm doing now, so. Um, oh, I'm excited to read this. I'm super excited to read this. Um, God, look at that. What the fucking crucible, you dick? That's mine. That's mine! I Why am I thinking about that clip so much lately? Um, yeah, no, I'm gonna go to that secret encounter. How much lore is there? Monarch, there's a shocking amount. Um, 2016 had really cool lore beats, but they were super in the background. Eternal just ran with it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. In 2150, following the loss of communication between Earth and Mars-based facilities, UAC Director Dr. Samuel Hayden suddenly resurfaced on Earth before the AN Council. 
The demonic invasion of Earth had already begun, and Dr. Hayden had arrived just in time to provide aid. He supplied the Resistance armies with Argent technology and advanced armaments, taking the helm of the newly formed Ark as lead director. Dr. Hayden's tactical and scientific acumen were invaluable to the war effort, and he was soon given full command over all Resistance efforts by the Global Council. The Ark engaged the demons with bleeding-edge tech, exosuits, and heavy frame battle mechs, but found themselves fighting a losing battle. Operation Hellbreaker was Samuel's final plan, a powerful counterattack that ultimately ended in failure. His robotic torso retrieved by Ark soldiers, Samuel is now tended to and monitored by a skeleton crew of scientists. They had been given contingency orders to safeguard his body along with the crucible obtained on Mars. So that sounds remarkably similar to what happened to the Argenta, yeah? They rally up all their soldiers, they send them into hell for one incisive strike to dismantle the Hell Army's uh, ability to, to regenerate and process souls. Uh, what's your opinion on battle mode? I haven't even tried it yet, Silch. Uh, I'm going to start doing battle mode after I finish uh, my, my Nightmare playthrough. Uh, I'd be lost in some of the lore if you didn't explain the lore. Well, Hellfrick, that's the whole point of these streams, yeah? Uh, and also, I just love gushing about Doom's lore, so it works out. Um, it's, it's interesting, the parallels there. Of, like, there's the one leader... In this timeline, it was like Hayden thought he was the leader and led all of his forces into hell and they got fucked. In the past, it was the Doomslayer leading all the night, the night Sentinels into hell and also got fucked. So, hmm. And there is, I don't know how deep it goes, but uh, there is something about how, like, prophecies tend to work in cycles. Oh, yeah. Log 2. Whatever. Where did he get the Doom Fortress? Uh, he transported you into that castle. Uh, is that known? Stoned one? I feel like that's not... That could be assumed, but doesn't seem true. Also, I don't think that adds up. Hayden's actually on your side? Sort of. I mean, he takes the Crucible from you at the end of Doom 2016 because he knows that you're trying to destroy all of the demons. He knows that you want to erase Argent Energy from this known solar system. So, I feel like he removes you because he doesn't want you to do that. So, if that was his motivation, why would he then put you in a... A mobile battle station where you can continue to fight demons. That doesn't make sense. I don't know that it I don't know that, that adds up. Uh, maybe it does. Uh, there's a lore that I have yet to discover, but he's on humanity's side. He is in the way that he thinks humanity needs to be saved. He is the Mark Zuckerberg. He is the I need to make decisions because no one else is. And I'm doing what I'm doing for the good of humanity. And uh but if he had never messed with Argent Energy, the demons would never be here. So, Christ. Ah, fuck, dude. I was staring at my toys. Chill. I think he wanted to do it on his own and fucked up. Werewolf, that's what I, that's what I see. To me, Hayden is like, he thinks he can do everything, because by and large, he has. The man invented a cybernetic body for himself so he wouldn't die to cancer. Um... And he said multiple times in 2016, he was like, I did what I had to do because humanity needed me to do it. So he's definitely the, like, I did nothing, or Samuel Hayden did nothing wrong kind of guy. Um, so, I don't know. What I, what I thought, what, what I thought was heavily implied in 2016 is that he put you back in stasis, like back into a sarcophagus. Uh, he did die to cancer? No, he didn't. He transported his brain... He transported portions of his brain into a cybernetic body. So, his, like... His humanity and his mem... Well, the implication that I read in 2016 is that he actually lost his humanity by transporting part of his brain into a cybernetic body. Which I thought was commentary on, like, mega corporations and social media moguls that are pretty sociopathic. Um, didn't he also create Argent Energy? He... Argent Energy was discovered, and he found the way to process it. Or discovered the way to process it. And ran the UAC. Yeah, Argent Energy is created in Hell. Argent Energy is processed living souls. Which is kind of what the Doom series is all about. It's, it's really, Doom is about energy. Uh, and the makers want to use Earth as a source for soul energy, or called Essence by the Argenta, Argent Energy by humans. Um... And the Doomslayer is trying to prevent them from doing that. 
Uh, so you're kind of caught up in this intergalactic bullshit where the Argenta, kind of like Robocop. I I think it's more like, uh, uh, was it Jupiter Ascending? But shouldn't compare it to that. Gears of War, yes, the, the emulsion, kind of the same thing. Uh, yeah. At the end of Doom 2016, you destroy the wheel that makes it. No, you close the hell portal. You destroy uh, the tether between Mars and Earth. Except uh, hell forces were already coordinating with Olivia Pierce to open portals on Earth at the same time, too. So, yes. Yes, the movie where Channing Tatum is a furry. Yes, that is that is what this game is like. And I, I don't apologize for that. Fuck. I already, I already fucked it up so bad. Yep. Well, yeah, I know. Sorry. You meant well. Yeah, Mars and Hell, you break that portal. That's what uh, that's what happens in Doom 2016. And then a lot more happens in Eternal. Um, and in regards to, like, the significance of you fucking up the demons. Yeah, Doom Annihilation is not good. It, it, I, I usually try to be as generous as I can be when I, like, watch anything, because, man, everything is dreams. Whenever you see a movie out there, it's somebody's, somebody's dream, maybe. Hopefully. Hopefully somebody cared enough to try. But, uh, Eternal, or sorry, Annihilation has a few scenes, and I'm like, hey, somebody tried here. This is, that, that's kind of a cool action shot. Or like, hey, the stunt actor did a pretty good job there. There's, like, some demon shooting sequences, or it's like, okay, you know. It seemed like they were trying to follow the the Paul W S Anderson uh, like Resident Evil formula. Like, let's have some let's have some cheesy action. Let's have some some dialogue that doesn't matter. Let's make it a little claustrophobic because we don't have a lot of a lot of sets to work with. Um, I could see what they were going for. I don't think they succeeded to the degree that Polly Dubs did. Because who could? Jesus, dude. Jesus, man. Uh, Hayden knows way too much about everything going on without him being someone more important in the story, so evidence of him being a Dark Lord in the game. I, that could be. I really don't want it to be, but that could be. I, I prefer to think of, like, he had premier access to all Argenta artifacts. So he knows what's going on because he's the only one who had access to that information and potentially he had the mind space to actually incorporate it all. Like he he was he was able to at an early stage be like, "Okay, there are worlds we don't understand and this is one of them." Um Yeah, he's also been studying it for years. He's got a super robot brain. Um he's just smart. I kind of uh yeah, weapon switch on left alt. Yeah. I try to put everything around the left-handed cluster, as is where my binds are. Um, so I can hit it with my thumb if I really need to. And then switching switching equipment on control is one of the best ideas I ever had. Because those uh he has the sword, yeah, he took the he took the crucible. Um what, one of the lines was like people were disquieted at the fact that he had like a super robot body. But I remember his line being like humanity may need a hero, which implies to me that he thought that he could he could handle everything. Um, which to me jives with the end of 2016 is that he used the Doom Slayer, or he let the Doom Slayer do what the Doom Slayer does and murder demons until he thought, Hayden thought, the situation was under control. It clearly wasn't. But Hayden, again, has a legacy of assuming that he can handle things he can't, like Argent Energy in general. Or the fact that his underling, Olivia Pierce, was very clearly under the control of, like, satanic influence. But he was like, well, you know, I got the Doom Slayer in my back pocket, everything will be fine. He was right, but he was also wrong. Uh, and I feel like that's that's a lot of Hayden's character. Or at least it was in 2016. I really don't see any of that texture in Eternal. Which is a bummer. Uh, it's a real bummer. I actually, I super, super liked Hayden's character. And I was hoping, again, I was hoping that there'd be some amount of depth to him. The thing that I haven't paid a lot of attention to and the thing that I'm reserving judgment about is that somebody referenced like Vega being like, am I the father kind of thing. I think that there's there's something going on there where like Vega and Hayden are starting to understand that they have almost prophetic roles in what's going on. Um, 
which could also lead into the fact that they are like I really hope it doesn't go here but maybe they're reincarnations of important figures in the past and they have their memories or some bullshit that's that's some like anime trash that I hope doesn't happen but it could I don't know uh, the director and producer talked about making that movie and essentially the studio gave them six different options for movies so they could keep their rights to the franchise chose Doom because he loved that series but it was always going to be directed DVD and streaming interesting I like eight months ago back when I was with Rooster Teeth I remember we did a segment for Gaming Weekly the short-lived thing that uh boy what a what a whole bullshit that was man someday I'll tell the whole story of that stupid ass fucking thing but that's not today because it hasn't been long enough but um yeah, I did a whole, like, research project on that movie to try to figure out why it was getting made, and I couldn't figure out anything. Like, there was no information about it at all. Nice man, thanks for the reset, man. Why did humans describe Hay Hayden as alien architecture? It was just that far advanced. Uh, maybe he seemed human to them? Oh, that was cool. When do, when do they do that? What's the context of that? Hayden did make his exo exoskeleton with Argent technology, so that would stand to reason, I think. It is technically alien. Yeah, I liked Gaming Weekly a lot, too. At the end of the mission? Oh, okay. Kind of like the fact your only friend is a robot and a humanoid robot? Yeah, yeah? I mean, Doomslayer is pretty, uh... Is pretty, uh... Inhuman himself. Because of similarities since like gaming? No. Uh, no, I didn't like... I didn't dislike Gaming Weekly at all. Uh, I liked it a lot. No, it's, it's more like... The circumstances of it being made and... And the, the issues that it caused and... Ah. Uh, it was a whole thing. Um, no, I, I, I liked the show. It, I mean, it was Inside Gaming. It was literally Inside Gaming. That was... That was kind of the idea. Is that we had... We'd all had the itch to like... Or me specifically had really wanted to do more more like gaming coverage, gaming journalism, gaming content, because we were really good at it. Um, and I feel like uh, that show format was really fun too. But uh, the motivations for making it and the uh, the realities behind its implementation got... Uh, messy. Let's see. Oh, whatever. It's a gaming is Autumn's baby now? Yes. And it's been wonderful to see. I'll watch it to catch up on my gaming news now, sometimes. As the father and doom eternal god. Uh... Maybe? I feel like one of the things I really like about Doom lore, and Eternal is super leaning into this, more than 2016 did, I think, is that it really tries to kind of recontextualize a lot of what we consider to be, like, biblically accurate visions of heaven and hell. Um, so, for example take uh, the soul extraction process um, in the in the context of doom you have to torture a person to make their soul leave their body so you can suck it out and use it as power or argent energy um, the way that religion define or Christian dogma defines hell is it's a place you go for eternal suffering after you die as punishment for being a bad person the torture is still the same it's just that well you know the human being's vision of it and put all this lore and, and like, uh, morality on it. But the reality is, no, you're just going to get tortured so that we can suck your life force out. Um, so, I think that's probably going to extend to, like, ideas of God and of Satan. Is that, like, the way that, the way that we visualize uh, religion or the afterlife and, and Christian dogma is a version of it. But it's a version that was either put there by the maker um, to, to uh, like, I guess, prepare us for being harvested. Um, so maybe to some degree, the, the visions that we have of religion are just, just like a way to um, make us be cool with, with the rapture when it comes. Um, which is really just, just basically reaping. It's, it's reaping souls. Good shot. Shit, man. So, if you extend that idea to... Um, to the idea of what a god is, well, then, like... God is not some, some white dude with a beard sitting on a cloud. 
um, God is just a more advanced, uh, more advanced culture or more advanced society that uses our entire civilization as livestock. You know, it's not an uncommon idea in, in science fiction. Again, uh, Jupiter ascending. Again, it all comes back to Jupiter ascending, just as it always has. Damn it! I hate that shit. You can blood punch those guys, but if you miss your timing, man, it just. Ooh, hold on. That doesn't give you doesn't give you full life. Ugh. Oh! Yeah. So, when it comes to, like... I don't know. I'm, I'm actually really excited to get to that part in the game and, and see the references to, like, the father and things like that. I remember seeing that the first time, but again, I was trying to finish the game to, to get the review out for YouTube in time. Uh, so I didn't really... Ah, shit. Have a lot of time to dedicate to it. Shit. Oh, man. Oh, blood punch. Shit! Another one. Okay, we'll go over here now, that's fine. Shit, man! Or the world's had a similar plot. Oh, harvest, harvest humans and slurp them up, yeah. I mean, or, or like fucking, what is it? Uh, to serve man. The, the Twilight Zone up. It's, uh, it's not a new concept, uh, and to, to some degree, you know, it's... Err. I was... To some degree, I was like, that was my theory in 2016, is like... There, there, were, there were allusions to Argen Energy being processed souls. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's why it's, it's so powerful. It's like, it's life energy, but processed and, and machined. Um, I was, my, that was my theory. And, and then when Eternal's trailers hit, when there were references to, like, it's, hum it's humanity's turn to be, like, harvested or whatever, or cold, or I don't know. I don't know exactly what, I don't remember exactly what the verbiage was, but I was like, oh, okay, so the Maker are the impos- are the, like, the advanced alien species that come around every so often to, ah, to harvest everyone. Uh, we fear it because we've done it to each other for thousands of years, and it's shocking how easy genocides can occur. That's an interesting point. <laughs> Jupiter setting was pretty awful. It, it is. It is. But the thing I love most about it, Jupiter setting to me, is that it is awful, but so much of the work and thought and creativity that went into it is really good. Or it should be good. Like it's, uh, the algebra really does work out about how that should have been like, that should have been like the new Inuyasha. It should have been the Matrix for, for women. You know? If the Matrix was all about, like, dudes fighting and punching each other, then here you have basically Inuyasha in space, which, by that premise alone, man, you got a hit on your hands, right? From the Wachowskis, and you got Channing Tatum as a dog man. And who doesn't want that? Who, like, has to obey orders? Like, again, Inuyasha. Uh, there's a literal, literal space opera where, like... Channing Tatum Dogman has to fly through an armada of ships to interrupt a, a space wedding in a space cathedral. <laughs> it's... It's the most anime movie I think I've ever seen. I, I do love it for that. I do... I some Part of me thinks if, if Jupiter Ascending were animated, or if it were just straight-up anime, people would love it. But it's a live-action movie with Western actors, so it doesn't... It, it doesn't get the same pass. Shit. Glad I never saw it. Dude, you gotta... Some night, some night when you're really drunk or something, when you're really out of it, put on Jupiter Ascending and Marvel. Marvel at it. 
It is it is astounding trash. Then again, I, I say that all the time, and if you you you've been in stream long enough that if if I were gonna convince you to do that, I would have done it already. I think. Hey, I o. There we go. Somebody did a do do movie, but it was filmed like Hardcore Henry. Well, I mean, yeah, you're just. Then, then it's just an entire movie that is the one part about the original Doom film that people liked. Uh, I think that's viable. Parker Henry was shockingly watchable. I thought, I thought the gimmick was going to get exhausting, but it never really did. At least not for me. Did you like Alita Battle Angel? I haven't seen it, actually. Which doesn't make sense. I, uh... I... Fuck. I have a, uh... Ah... Jeez, this fight's rough. Does Doom ever remind you, hold on, of Halo from the combat combat aspect? No. Um, Doom reminds me of the games that came before Halo that were more mechanically interesting than Halo. <laughs> uh, Halo was a pretty big systemic step back in terms of shooters. It had to be, because it was on a controller instead of mouse and keyboard. But PC shooters were doing this a long time before... Halo came along. Halo did a lot of what it needed to do to make people okay with shooters on a controller, but yeah, it's more like Quake. Uh, Halo had multiplayer. Halo got story. Halo 1 does not have story. I mean, I guess there's some bits in there that kind of tease things that were paid off later, but there's no way they knew what those were in Halo 1. Halo 1 does not have story. Get out of here. Halo 1, you're Robocop shooting aliens on a fucking planet. That's... The story of Halo 1 is your Robocop. Shooting goofy aliens. Story. Get out of here. There's... I guess the intro cutscene does have some... Some cool lines that lean into some other ideas. Hey! I'll give you that, but... Hey, yeah, Halo Reach gave Halo 1 story. Uh, I agree with that. I don't dislike Halo. I want to be clear here. If you grew up playing Halo, Halo's a good game. Well designed. But Doom Eternal is, is kind of what shooters were on PC long before... Well, maybe maybe more like Doom 2016. Doom Eternal's kind of another thing. Um, yeah, Halo did set pieces. But again, PC had Half-Life. Um, and, and I hate to like say it like that. It's not like it's a competition. But... Brrr. Oh, yeah, The Fall of Reach. Sorry, the book. You're right. But that came out like what? That was after Halo 3? When that book hit? I could be wrong about that. I'm definitely, probably, absolutely wrong about that. Um, now, to Bungie's credit, uh, I think there's there's an art to putting in, to putting in um, lore bits that you can pay off later. There's an art to that, and they were really good at it. Um... Halo Combat Evolved is not an accident. But, like... I don't know. Halo's Halo's strength was in... in popularizing and adapting mechanics that were already... quite a bit more... more, uh... developed than they were in the implementation that Halo used. Fuck. What? That's weird. AI again, like you can you can think Halo is groundbreaking if you didn't play any of the PC shooters that came out like the four years before Halo did. It really didn't do all that much. Um, in terms of in terms of shooter mechanics, that was new. It was popular. It was also the only thing to play on Xbox for a very long time. And sometimes I wonder. Yeah, Halo AI isn't isn't super advanced. Um, there was a lot there was a lot more going on in AI than than Halo Combat Evolved. Um, again, like if, if you if you played on console, then having like having followers follow you around, having them like turn on you if you shot if you shot their their buddies, like this was all really cool shit. And I don't mean to to like I don't want to knock that at all, or or try to make somebody feel like those things were less important, but 
that was not the first time it happened. Never had a PC, so Halo was amazing. Yeah, and that's valid. Um, and that's that's kind of. I feel like, you know, if if four years from now there's a kill zone game that comes out that has a lot of the stuff that Half Life Alex does right now, people might attribute kill zone with doing all those things, but. To me, and and I, boy, boy, I, I used to mean this as an insult, and I hope, I hope, ah, jeez, I'm getting fucking, I'm getting fucked up. Halo's multiplayer was groundbreaking, like the four-player split screen, because GoldenEye technically had that, even though GoldenEye's multiplayer sucked dick. Um, but you know, there was Quake World, there was Quake Two. These games had like online multiplayer shooting. To a degree that was well above where Halo launched at. Um, it was groundbreaking for console multiplayer. And it had LAN. Those are, those are things that are 100% true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Perfect Dark. Matchmaking Halo 2. Yep. Um, Halo, 2, Halo 2 and Xbox Live. That's a big deal. Bringing online multiplayer to con the console experience. Totally big deal. Don't don't mean to minimize that at all. But when it comes to like something like Halo 2, and I'm the asshole that was playing like Tribes 2 two years before, where it's like it's it's the battlefield experience of like you can be you can be in a plane and you can jump out and you can go down and you can be in a squad with your homies and like you can do all this shit. And Halo 2 is like, well, you got two guns now. And it's like, well, big, big fucking deal, dude. You don't even know the scale that other games are operating at. Um, but there's there's validity to, to opening up an experience to people and making it easier for them to play. And PC gaming was by no means easy to, to do in the 2000s. Ow. It's getting better. It's getting a lot better. Oh, ah, shit. Fuck. Keep forgetting to shotgun and it's getting me killed. Or, sorry, uh... Oh! Keep forgetting to, uh... Chainsaw. Shit. hey -ya! Keep wanting to... Keep wanting to look at chat, because I actually really like this discussion. Anyway, again, I actually... So, I used to be... I reference this a lot. I used to be much more of an asshole than I am now, believe it or not. Um, and I used to be pretty, like, resentful of Halo for uh, for people attributing so much of, like, shooter innovation to it that really kind of belonged to a bunch of other development work on PC. Um, I've since put that down, or I've, I've come to appreciate the things that Halo did well, and it did a lot of things super well. Uh... God, dude, those glory kills are fucking me up. Yeah, Doctor Eleven, you're doing. <laughs> uh, I've learned to put that stuff down. Oh God, a Tribes Two stream. I don't even know how you can play that game anymore. I used Game Spy, didn't it? Tribes Ascend had two full servers last night, and Tribes Two has more full servers for Defense. Really? Tribes Two is back. Holy shit, man. Ah. Uh. I've never, I haven't thought about Tribes 2 in a long time, but that used to be my life. I ran a Tribes 2 clan! Gosh. No, it's okay. That's what this whole stream is about. Why am- man. Look, I gotta go get more whiskey. It's only gonna help me play better. Clearly. Uh, Nalish, thank you for the Prime sub. Tails the weak point. Double jump or dash out of the way. Man. THT guy. Thank you for the prime sub. I think one of Halo's biggest accomplishments was help making FPS is one of the biggest gaming genres even to this day. That's true. One could say that maybe Doom did that before Halo did, but yes. And Wolf 3D. 
I will admit, too, that a, a decent portion of, of my... my idiot resentment of it is also that id Software is a, a Texan company. And I was always like, fuck yeah, man. Texas. Revolutionizing genres. Yeah. Yeah, it was... It was kind of... It was... It was kind of Doom. I mean, consider this, all right? Consider this. Doom is a shooter about a marine in space that shoots aliens, or I guess demons, but aliens, all right? What is Halo about? <laughs> I mean, granted, both those games are ripping off Alien and or Aliens specifically because every everything was ripping off a movie back then. That was all video games were, or the big ones were just like pop culture, or, uh, pastiches of pop culture shit, because that's all, like, game developers didn't hire writers, so they just made what they thought was cool. Which means they just ended up remaking the movies they liked. Halo's lore is what I love most about it. I'll... Halo's lore is solid as shit. I don't know that it necessarily started that way, but... It is super impressive how, uh... How, how well cult... God, blood punching a pinky running at you sucks. Yeah, Werewolf, I, 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 I didn't know that. Um, I think Alana was saying that, that like Doom was originally intended to be an alien's license. What whiskey are you drinking? It's just Jack Daniels. It's 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 here, it's drinkable, that's it. Dashed into pinky? I was trying to blood punch into pinky. Um, I didn't dash. The, the blood punch zooms you forward when you... Uh, the blood punch zooms you forward when you use it, if it's like triggering the animation, which is usually what you want. Except if there's a pinky dashing at you, it will get you hit by the pinky. Except that you're meant to blood punch pinkies. That's kind of an intended mechanic. What? I thought there was a hallway there. There's still two! Arr! Jeez. Does that make COD for the newer generation? Yeah. Halo for Xbox, Call of Duty for Xbox 360, and I guess Fortnite after that. Yep. They just strike Halo 5 from canon. Yeah, they tried. I feel like an outlier and saying I'm not one of the people who thought Halo 5 was bad. I don't think it's amazing by any means. I just don't think it's a steaming pile of trash. People seem to call it. No, I thought it was. I thought it was a good attempt. I thought it was a good effort, especially the multiplayer. I like. I really appreciated a lot of the mechanical changes they made about like adding dash. Dash turns out. Um, I thought they tried to. They tried their best to make it an esport. God bless them. Um, Fuck. I remember to keep chainsawing. Always be chainsawing. I feel like that's what's getting me. Griswold. Thank you for the prime sub. Ow. Where are you, snake? There you are. Right, there's two more. Shit. 
There's... There's... Yeah. Hey, Griswold! Thank you for gifting subs! Oh! Oh, there's another one! There's so many! Oh, there's so many! Ah, shit. You're one of those boys. Fuck! I got, like, stuck behind a little thing, and I just couldn't move. Jeez! <sighs> I think helping to solidify that game type on console, along with Call of Duty, helped to grow FPSs into something bigger with bigger mass market appeal. Halo didn't really do anything first, but their place in history of FPSs is undeniable. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I feel like... Trying to think of the analogy that's that doesn't seem like it's it's a baked in insult. It's kind of like Nirvana for grunge, you know. Uh, they didn't invent the genre. Um, there's other bands that maybe did more in in the space, like Sonic Youth, but they did hit the charts in a way that popularized the genre in a way that is you know you can't ignore it, and it, it doesn't mean that they're bad because they weren't first. They just they hit on a formula that was widely successful. It was adaptation, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Carvin, that's what I was hoping to avoid. Is, is some kind of musical reference or, or allegory that didn't sound like a backhanded compliment. Um, there were games that did it first, but yeah, console game hit the lottery. Yep. World of Warcraft. Warcraft 2. Well, Blizzard has a long legacy of real big fish. Yes, of course. Okay, break. I'm going to go get more whiskey. I'll be right back. I'm going to beat this... Beat this room, I swear. Maybe. <laughs> Making an Aristocats remake? We, no, they can't. Uh, they can't do that. 2D animated movies need to come back. Nobody goes and sees them, you know? It wasn't like Princess and the Frog was Disney's last hurrah, and it just didn't. How does Sentinel Armor work? I thought it just completely reduced the amount of damage you take. That's the cheat code, right? Oh boy, I picked that up way too fast. Well, here we are. I guess it'll, it'll get me through the first phase quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's an Arachnotron, there's Pinkies, then there's like four of the Snake Boys. Ah, oh, shit. Jesus Christ. Fuck, man. What? Fuck. I realized I wasn't using my chain gun at all. Maybe that's why. Uh, Charday, I have a, uh, I have a splash of Coke Zero Vanilla in my whiskey. Just because I feel like being, uh, being spicy, but... I mean, Jack Daniels is so inoffensive that you can pretty much just drink it on ice. That's what I'm drinking. Could be sleeping on Heat Wave with the Master Upgrade? I don't have the Master Upgrade. Otherwise, I would. Uh, I'd check it out. Um, uh, you're right, though. I feel like... Err, I'm probably sleeping on something important right now. the nice thing about uh, the lock-on rocket launcher is that you're reasonably assured that even if even if the uh, demon ah well never mind dude I was gonna say even if the demon like 
goes into a stagger state that the following rockets will probably kill it. So you don't have to worry about closing the distance or putting another shot in on it to, to knock it out. Shit. I think I need to use this teleporter a lot more to get some distance when I need it. Uh. Nice. There's a snake man right there! Gosh! Shit! Please dash more! Ah! Why are you here? Go into the portal! Alright. <sighs> Starting to get more skeptical of public opinion when it comes to games. Like, big criticism of Eternal was that they nerfed regular melee, but there's a reason the developers did that. I'm finding oftentimes people don't play games in the way they're designed to be played, so they don't have as much fun as they could if they knew what the developer intended. Just like Dark Souls hiding behind shields when you got nerfed in later installments, play the game how you're supposed to. There's an element to that killer. I, I think it is the way I see that. I agree. I, I think a lot of people approach video games with, I'm coming to this to have fun. And if I'm hitting buttons and I'm not having fun, then it's the game's fault. Um, if you want to... I apologize in advance for, for taking your very accurate observation and, and blowing, out, blowing it out into something in, in Lawrencetown. But um, the way I see that is like, people come to games for different reasons. The people who get mad about the melee being nerfed and the ammo pools being small, they just wanted they wanted to come into a game and shoot a bunch of shit and feel powerful. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they want to lose or have to get better at the game mechanically to feel that. They just wanted the power. So for them, theoretically, they should put on some cheat codes, right? Of just like, just go in and kill stuff. But then you get this weird ego fight of they're like, no, I'm good at games. I shouldn't have to use cheat codes. Well, all you want to do is win. Well, yeah, I should be able to win. And then... Don't worry about them, basically. If you've identified yourself as the kind of person who really likes learning... Oh. Oh, I ran out of characters and sounded more aggressive than I meant. No, it's cool. Uh, I think the game actually did lock up. That's rare. And also the music is like... Oh, it's still going. Okay. Um, are we good? Yeah, okay. Uh... I think then what you should maybe consider is where are you going, where you see that kind of feedback, and then the people there may not be into games for the, the thing that you want. Also, this is only taking up three gigs of memory. How is that possible? After the level loaded, maybe it's before, but... Uh, the trick really is to just find a gaming commentary community or a gaming commentary source that connects with what you want out of games. Uh... And from the sounds of it, you actually really like coming to a game, understanding its systems, and mastering them. That's actually not what a lot of people want from games. A lot of people enjoy the uh, the power, the idea of progression, the uh, the bars getting bigger, numbers popping out of things. Uh, often, game mechanics, especially fail states, uh, exist in opposition to that. If you have to tell somebody they didn't play good enough, then... Um, that's kind of contrary to their philosophy. I came here to feel good. I came here to be entertained. Does this game suffer from stability issues? Uh, not really, no. That's the first time I've ever had the game lock up on me like that. Ever. Um, used to depend a lot on reviews. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Solo Samurai. That's pretty good. Uh, when games fail to give players the right tools to learn and progress can go horribly wrong. Yep. You're right. And, and they're in the middle is is the the rare instance in games like doom eternal where they have a rule set that is functional and interesting and difficult to master and complicated but also the game gives you all the information you need to know how to get better most of the time most of the time to me that's that's the magic sauce um, a game with a rule set that allows for uh, complicated decision making. For me personally, a game that moves quickly, that forces you to make decisions rapidly. And then uh, 
the the game state showing you the player where your mistake was um, and sometimes it's you know very few games can be all of that the streams wrapping up uh getting there actually I'm trying to beat this room but my uh my dooming skills may be on the slide which I'm willing to uh ah, shit fuck somebody behind me too this is a bad spot to be in. There's a pinky behind me and a man can miss in front. Yeah, I'm fucked. Woo! I heard the screech and then I got bonked and I was like, well, I am dicked. Because I can't go forward. Uh, or to on hard mode. Uh, yeah, I at, I went to a demo event that was in LA. Like, just as Corona was kind of kind of popping out. So that was a little, little spicy, but... Uh, I tried playing the demo on hard and my shit got worked, dude. Ori on hard is no joke. Uh, that's one of those other things that I really liked about the original Ori is that Ori was not afraid to murder you <laughs> if you're playing on, on harder difficulties. For a game that was cutesy and, and meant to be about, like, that seemed like it was that indie tick of, like, we're gonna be about LGBTQ business, yeah! And then it also was like, oh, you also gotta hit some motherfucking jumps, asshole, or we're gonna kill your ass. Um, it is rare to have a game that is, like, artistically interesting and also very mechanically demanding which is what i loved about ori i i praise 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 the sun on that uh man so ugh, you want to talk about like what halo did for gaming i feel like demon souls deserves its own chapter in game dev fucking jesus their little chomp move sucks because they just, they keep turning towards you. There. Uh, oh. oh, he was right there. Um, Demon's Souls showed that games with mechanical depth and fail states could still sell. And it took everyone else about four or five years to catch on, but they eventually did. Things were looking pretty fucking grim heading into uh, Gen 7, which I believe is the uh, 360 PS3 generation in terms of game design. Game design was basically gone. Like, literally gone. The The rule sets of games didn't matter anymore. It was it was a game about mur- like, every game was about murdering or leveling up. Uh, you could beat every game by basically putting the controller on the ground and rubbing your feet on it. Uh, because everyone wanted to make their games as mass market as possible. No one thought that a game that was it was weird. It was it was kind of like uh, it was like post market crash. Games were getting so expensive to make because of HD graphics and all that shit that no one wanted to take the risk that their game might be too hard for people to buy and play. Uh, so games got really easy for a long time. Really easy and really boring. Like just really loud. Really like everyone was showing off all the budgets they had, but no one was like making an interesting game. Fuck! God, when a pinky backs you into a corner like that. And the way Doom Guy like bounces up sometimes. Okay, I think I, I think I can get a path to a, a glory kill. Maybe would be nice. There's one. Yeah, Final Fantasy VII. Man, if if you play seven, and and just it's it's not that like that's flawed logic by the way. Uh, Final Fantasy VII is the easiest Final Fantasy probably of all of them. It was also the one that broke the franchise out in the West. So. Can you really blame developers for making the correlation? Like, oh, people like easy games. Because they do. Um, luckily, we've gotten to the point now where uh, it seems like the market is robust enough that not every game has to be that basic. Let's see you over there. Thank God I got him in the air. Good. Are you? Damn it. Okay, out. See you back there. Okay. Fuck, dude. Okay. Uh. Nope. Didn't grab. There we go. Hi. Why is there a guy there? Shit. Shit! God damn! Yes, the soundtrack slaps. 
<laughs> oh, fire will be here shortly. While well, in Berserk, you can still shoot the fl shoot flames of grenades. That's really good to know, Quintonius. Thank you. <sighs> I thought 10 was really easy. Yes, you're right. 10, 10 was actually... I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think now which one was easier, 10 or 7. Hmm. What's up, Turbid? Yeah, this doesn't bode well for Ultra Nightmare. Gotta find a good medium or audience for what audience you want. Yes, uh, I agree entirely. I love some easy games because they're fun, but others, uh, you question why I'm even doing this is so easy, like Kirby's Yarn. Yeah, same game set of hard games too. Gotta find a medium. Yup. Uh, it's, it's about scratching, like, the player's desire to improve. And that's all about, like you said, is, 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 or I think you said, is, is, is providing them the information to show them how they can improve. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's fascinating because there's no right answer. If it were math, people would have figured it out by now, but it's not. It's, it's artistry. It's the art of game design. Uh, I fucking love it. I, lo I love how inscrutable it is. And it's, it's the art of movie making. It's the art of it's the art of any creative medium. Just just turns out that I get to play this one. So I, I where are you? All right, all right, all right. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Actually, what a shot! What a shitty shot! No! What the hell? Ah! Where did you come from, Dick? Ah. Remote deton detonation on rocket launcher is good for staggering. Yeah, maybe that's what I need to do. God, this room is wild, man. Also, I've been drinking, so I'm probably not playing super well. Shit, are you serious? Okay. Does, does the Mancubus exploding hurt you? Or does it just hurt other demons? I guess that's a silly question. I should I should I should always assume that it hurts you. Dude, dude! This like this dude needs to be dead already. It's taking way too long to kill him, and now I'm fucked. Alright. This is this is why you have to ah, like you have to knock you have to take out demons. Ah! If you have a single moment of opportunity, you have to take it. Um, because if like fights drag on and demons stack up and then they start surrounding you, you're you're just dicked. You gotta get your rotations down to like take everything out the second it pops up. Snake, thank you. Got one. Shit, 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 please dash. Man, like one missed dash will, will murder you. It's crazy. Got ammo? Okay. Shit, Jesus. Ugh. Shit, shit. Dude! Oh, there was a snake man there! Gosh! 
noticed spend a fair amount of your time with your reticle pointed down instead of even with the horizon. If you keep it aimed higher, you'll find it much easier to match and find targets. Hmm. I think I do that... I don't know why I do that. I feel like I do that because I don't want the reticle to confu visually confuse me, so I keep it a little bit lower, so if there's an enemy, I can be a boop. So if, maybe if I switch to a dot reticle, it would help. Um, but that's valid feedback. Thank you. Ah, shit. Did not mean to pick that up. Forgot it was there. I really wanted to find that Rachnotron, but never did. Bit of a whoopsie there. What? Hit me! Shit. <sighs> yeah, okay. Okay, I guess I did get the Arachnotron at some point. Good lord! Oh, that they can, like, stagger attacks like that. Because I'm pretty sure I got hit by two... You can flame Belchmon on Rampage? Yeah. I mean... I don't think flame belching and Rampage would have prevented me from dying, but yeah. You're right. This is brutal. Yeah. I may have to, uh... I may have to, uh, wait until I'm a little more sober to attempt this. Shit. I'm missing my shots. Getting stuck on walls. Not good. Overdashing. My, my dashing could be a lot more accurate, too, I feel like. Not something I... Uh... Dude. I feel like, I feel like to some degree, too, like, the amount of damage it takes for minions to get staggered almost feels like it's not consistent. Like, sometimes I'll hit them twice with, uh... God! Right. I'm fucked. I'll hit them twice with the uh, the heavy assault rifle and they'll go stagger. Other times I'll just pop, 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 and they just won't do it. Explosions are better for staggering. Need another drink? I agree. I agree with that. That was a valid and accurate statement. How is he not staggered? I also feel like I need to be a little more judicious about just, just leaving. Just taking off when the... This was always a problem I had in multiplayer too, is like... I would, I would get into an encounter and I wouldn't want to leave until I won. But sometimes if the situation is disadvantageous, you just... You leave. You just leave. Leave and disen disengage and re-engage later. It's, it's such a judgment call, though, of trying to determine when it's safe for you to stay and fight and finish, because you have to do that, too. You gotta kill shit, otherwise you're not gonna get anything done. Shit. Ah, didn't mean to go back through. So now, I need a glory kill, so let's find one. Shit! One extra bullet. That's it. I don't get a glory kill. That one's too close.
can't stop taking damage. Ah, uh, okay. I'll take it. Watch this. It seems like you get a little bit of time back every time you, you murderize somebody. Oh, that's new. I like that. What? Oh shit! Just popped up right in front of me, huh? Jesus! Burned! Yeah. Oh, you're. I see you snark snaking around behind me. I see it. Oh, it's, it's you. You're not an imp. Ah, okay. Oh, you're not an imp either. Jesus Christ. Fuck. Fuck. Fuck! <sighs> that was the one guy. See, this, that's the big thing about Eternal's AI, is they will put enemies... Behind you, I was gonna go to the portal and be safe, and there was a snaky man in the way. I was like, fine, okay, I'll hit him with the meat hook, stun him, jump over, go to the portal. Plasma rifle is great to stagger. Really? Just hitting with plasma? Do you like what they did with Doomslayer's character in this game? Eh, 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 eh. Some things I like, some things I, I personally am not super huge fan of, but I'm down with whatever. I, what I want doesn't matter. I want them to make whatever they want, and I'll, that's what I want. Uh, so, there are things for my preference and for my headcanon about Doomslayer I would have preferred to be a little bit different, but that's just me. I thought Doomslayer was the betrayer for a while. A headshot with the regular heavy cannon is enough to stagger fodder. Yeah, but that's one click. So, like, are you sure that that one click is going to get the head? If I could aim worth a damn, maybe it would. We good? We good. Okay. Andrew, hey, thanks for the... Yeah, thank you for the, uh... Thank you for gifting subs, dude. Hit the wall! What's your deal? Why do you like this? Another pinky. Ah. Dude! Make of swing point is the chest, not the head. Oh, okay. The, the little orb. That's really good to know. Yeah, Elrock. That's, uh... Yeah, the pinkies are rough. Yeah, pinkies have really weird tracking. I feel like I'm gonna have to really learn the ins and outs of when when you can like dash to break pursuit because it it's not it's not whenever you want. It really isn't. Which is weird, because like missile tracking, if there's missiles tracking on you, if you dash at all, you're fine. You're safe. It, they won't hit you. Unless you just somehow dash back into them. You have to jump over them. They'll still get you out of the air. Uh, your hitbox is a, is a little funky. At least that's kind of how it feels. Ah, shit. I forgot that was there. I'm wasting precious murder time. God damn it. Damn it. I 
also got a pinky. Okay, he's dead. Fair. The raw amount of, of minions they spawn in this fight is absurd. I think I'm. I think I'm keeping my aim low again. I'm gonna stop that. No, I, that's not the right gun. Let's back up. I. Jeez, man. Getting to that corner is really bad. Man, I think this one might have to wait until another time. I'm running out of time here. All right. Let's see how this goes. This fight is gnarly! Accidentally picking that shit up. Ah. That was a bad idea. Why did I stay in fight? Okay. I was like, I need to take that guy out. Okay, I gotta remember, there's a Mancubus in there now. Oh. Shit. Give us moves. I have more fuel now. Get in the. Ah! Ah. We done? Maybe we close to done. Ah. Good lord, guys. Oh, good god. What a fight. What a fight. How am I gonna- how am I gonna do that? 
without dying. Oh my gosh. I don't know if it's just that the game is designed, but the way you play it looks like every movie is precisely calculated. That's kind of the idea. It's like every time you every time you make a decision and do something, it's because you have a direct need at that moment of I need more ammo, I need more health, I need to clear out this enemy, I need to I need to open up this path of movement. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys. Um, man, that's uh. so yeah that stuff like that. I'm like, how am I gonna do this on Ultra Nightmare? How am I gonna do this? Came into this attempt, where are we and what's happening? We're trying to retrieve the metallic carcass of Samuel Hayden, the previous leader of the resistance on Earth against the demon invasion, who's got a whole bullshit going on, but that's essentially where we're at right now. Uh, by 2151, the Ark began running operations from the Mobile Command Carrier, a seaborne command center designed for long range strike operations, which would serve as Ark HQ, their primary. Uh, whiskey their primary objective to locate the source of the hell growth infestation and in doing so shutting down the emergence of hell portals and closing the gate between dimensions at the heart of the armored response coalition is an aggressive research and development program in pursuit of new military technologies as part of dr hayden's commitment uac resources under his direction including some of the most powerful ai ever created have begun deploying in service of weapon development designed to face the hell threat head on didn't work out, did it, though? That feels like some Command and Conquer shit. All of our military is being operated out of one boat. Again, like the Doom Fortress. God, the parallels are wild. I feel like Hayden was trying to become the new Doom Slayer? Huh. Try the Father Glory Kill Reach... Uh, the Father Glory Kill Reach rune saved my ass so much. Yeah, I gotta find I gotta find a particular I feel like I feel like each fight or each of the big fights is gonna have its own rune combo that'll that'll make it work a lot better. Uh, finding those is gonna be an interesting challenge. One that I am excited. I'm excited to undergo. Yeah, my, uh, I've been thinking, I've been thinking a lot about that, uh, the comment, a, a really insightful one, too, about where my aim is at. I, I've actually seen similar critique, or critique may be a strong word, but similar commentary, uh, from other people. It's like, you're not, you're not holding your mouth, ah, uh, you're not holding your mouse in the most, like, you're not aiming in the right position. You're, you're putting more work on yourself by where you hold your default aim. Yes. Marauders and Nightmare is what I've worried the most about. Um, I'm I'm actually really excited to uh, to to fight a Marauder because it's going to be an issue, and I, I'm really excited to sort of workshop it and figure out figure out what can be done. Clicking on all these heads, this Destiny Burbiter, Arbiter. Anyway, I can't I can't be streaming for too much longer, guys. Got some plans tonight. Got some hot plans. Got a nice romantic dinner with Steph plans. Workshop by the end of this level, yeah. I'll try my best. Me, JC from the future. You're only the person. No, unfortunately, somebody somebody already beat Doom on Ultra Nightmare. Uh, I appreciate the attempt, though. Dinner indoors, yes. We ordered uh, a nice spread from one of LA's restaurants. We're going to enjoy it inside after thoroughly unpacking it and washing our hands. Yeah, that's the idea. It's um man. For all for all the for all the things people yell at capitalism about, 
you gotta admire how nimble it can be. Uh, the LA dining scene has, like, within two weeks been like, we gotta adapt. And the, the like, the restaurants that have found a way to stay alive, and, well, well let's hope, uh, stay alive and, and kind of find a way to, to continue to serve food and... I don't know. It's really cool. So anyway, Stephanie found a restaurant that is, is still serving nice meals uh, and ordered it for us. So, yeah. Your boy's gonna go have a nice romantic dinner. Is it here? Oh, it's here! Okay, well that's that then. What kind of food is it? Good food. It's not really of like a cuisine, I guess. American is the, the closest that it would be. No, this is not, uh, this is not Boober Eats. As far as I know, it was delivered by somebody who was fully clothed, so. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, but, uh, it's time to go live life, I guess. But this is living, living life, too. Oh, yeah, delivery offering no contract where to leave it at the door. Yeah. Before pandemic, because you got to sign, man, I can't. How much? What am I supposed to do? I, mean, I can't. And now it's they throw it from the car as they're driving by. All right. Does it say mid level? It does. There are checkpoints because I'm not on ultra violence or ultra nightmare, whatever. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, back on back on streaming tomorrow, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, I guess, or next time, whatever. Podcast tomorrow. All right. Oh, Bye, everyone. Look at these cookies. There are cookies. The program. Sixty-four commands make it all kinds of fun. Ready, set, go. Oops. Unlike most kids, 